across Tampa Bay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Better strap in and get ready. Because it's Jay and Zach. Jay Wrecker and Zach Blodner. 12 to 3 on DAE. What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Jay and Zach here on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. I am Jay Retro. That is Zach Blobner. Hacksaw Johnny Dugas on the other side of the wall. Hacksaw means a lot more knowing that WrestleMania is just a couple of days away. I'm rocking my WrestleMania 6 t-shirt right now. We are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Jack's got a, uh, Zach's got a nice jacket, a zacket, as I like to call it. Uh, looking sharp over there, buddy. Ah, uh, thank you, man. It's what a is big that day. for? What is going on? Uh, today is Autism Awareness Day around okay. America. Very good. Um, and I got a couple pins on, and I didn't know how else to attach them without wearing a blazer. So for 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 the minor addition to the outfit, I, I kind of had to go full force on the other side. But wearing blue today to support uh, autism awareness, and again, it's a. It's a community that's come such a long way in terms of people being aware of it and being comfortable talking about it and comfortable around those uh, that do have autism. And I know on the race side, we've talked a lot about it, too, because Harold Ramirez's yeah. son and, and they have this whole sensory room at the Trop, which is awesome. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on today. But, uh, yep, yeah, wearing blue and, and rocking the blazer with the pins to show my support for that community, which is an awesome one. Yeah, very, very uh you know, there's just so much that more that needs to be done, right? Like we need to continue to be aware, need to continue to funnel funds through programs like that to be able to help some of these youngsters, uh, especially that are afflicted by it. Um, yeah, and just make the world an easier place for them to live in. And I know a lot of times when we have causes like this we're talking about, it's about like where you can donate, where you can spend time. The message I have today is one that has taken me a long time because I grew up using the word. The only message I have today is to stop using the R word. Yeah. And, and that's something, again, like I grew up using that word, not where, realizing it. I think it was very societally acceptable. And it still slips from me on, from time to time. I can be honest about that. Mm -hmm. But it's the simplest thing we can do out of respect for that community, family members, people that have those loved ones in their life with autism. It's just not using the R word. Like it's such, so simple. Yeah. So I'm not asking you to put a dollar anywhere. I'm not asking you to spend time in the community. But just try to be more mindful of using the R word and, and not bluntly. Exactly. Uh, speaking of our words, I got three for you. Rays rocked by Rangers. <laughs> Those there ones you go. Are okay. Alliteration. Well, I like it when it's flipped finest. around a little bit. Uh, you would hope to see or hear Rangers rocked by Rays, but unfortunately, that's not what we've seen. And now our Tampa Bay Rays are two and three through five games on the season after losing last night to the Texas Rangers by a score of nine to three. And I remember having this conversation yesterday, and my key to the game, one of my big keys to the game was make sure you get off to a good start. You can't be get behind two or three runs before you even step up to the plate. And unfortunately for the Rays, Josh Young took Ryan Pepio, big fly, three-run ding-dong in the first inning, three-nothing behind the eight ball. And the Rays just, they could not catch up. And... It's hard to look at that game yesterday, Zach, and, and not think that maybe not every game, maybe not every other game, but there's going to be games like that where they fall behind because there's still a lot to be desired when it comes to the pitching staff. And even though Pepio got better as the game went on, I know it didn't end well either there in the sixth, but, man, that's an awful way to start your first appearance for the Tampa Bay Rays. <sighs> And it sucks because I know people were even critical within the moment last night of that first inning of Pepio walking batters and then he gives up the big hit. Uh, Josh Young just blitzed him for all four RBIs there in the front end of things, including the three-run shot in the first. But he was so close, if you were watching, to the strike zone. And I, they weren't close enough that I blame the umps because they were making the right calls. Like those guys were walked legitimately. But it wasn't like Pepio was so wild, Jay, that he was throwing it like over Pinto's head and into the dirt. And, like, you're talking about a guy that was just off that box. And you could tell the nerves got to him. A younger pitcher, a guy who, you know, obviously was making his first start with his new team. Uh, and I still have a lot of faith in Pep to kind of come around throughout the season. He's definitely going to need to grow and evolve as we move forward. But I, I wasn't as critical of Pepio as I feel like others were uh, in that first inning, which wasn't a good one. But I don't think it was as far off as the scoreboard showed. Now, when you look at Ryan Pepio, it reminds me a lot of what we saw with Taj Bradley last year. Mm -hmm. of he's going to be a guy that's going to have to elevate the fastball to be successful and then mix in some of the off-speed stuff. 
if you are not sharp with your command, Zach, you're going to get in trouble. That's the big thing. You have to make sure that you're locating the fastball when you go up in the zone. Listen, you're going to get strikeouts that way, and we saw that last night. But if you lead fastballs up, if you leave changeups and off-speed pitches up, you're going to get burned. And that's what you saw from Ryan Pepio yesterday where you saw some good, you saw some bad. But when you're a team like the Rays that needs consistent pitching, especially early on in the game to set the tone, you didn't get that. And listen, when I look at the 22 and 23 stats of Ryan Pepio, I just wonder what guy we're going to see. And there's not a ton of examples. There's not a ton of uh like proof of what type of pitcher he is, but I just want to take you back to 2022. He pitched nine games for the Dodgers. You know I love my whip stat. His whip was 1.46. That's almost a one and a half runners per inning that's reaching via the walk or via the hit. Much better in 2023 when it was 0.76. After, I know it was just one start, but five and two thirds, it's 1.41. So what are we going to see? Are we going to see... Some more of the 2022 version where he lets in a lot of, you know, lets a lot of people on base. Is it going to be better like we saw in 2023 or is it somewhere in the middle? We know the stuff is there, Zach, but you can't continuously walk people. And this is not just for Pepio. Like seven walks again last night for the race. Four out of the arm of Pepio. Davinsky, one from him. Phil Maton, I mean, those two guys, uh, they didn't look like they knew what the hell was going on at all. And Maton has had a really, really tough go of it in his first year with Tampa Bay. Yeah, and, and real quick again on Pepio, I will judge him more harshly for better or worse on the next start because you know him and Steiner are going to sit in the lab in these next few days prior to it and say, this is where it went well, this is what we did wrong. They're really going to put their stuff together, and we'll see if he can bounce back. And we saw at times, again, with Taj even last year, a different rookie at the time, um, that they were able to kind of work on things and grow. I know he had a, sh- a snide in the summer, but all that being said, those f- first few starts, we saw some evolution from Taj. I hope we see that from Pepio. I want to focus more on Maton because mm-hmm. that's a guy who was supposed to be one of the biggest acquisitions the Rays made this offseason. I like it. I the, thought it was a smart move. We both did because this is a, a laboratory back to Snyder and what he does that grows these arms. But to be able to go out and get a guy that's already got some resume to him and think you can maybe turn him into an elite guy, a Jason Adam type of guy, and then you have both them and Fairbanks, felt good. But Maton has not looked good. And, and yesterday he was getting batted around. The last time we saw him, he was wildly throwing the ball all over the freaking plate. Pinto couldn't stop it. Davinsky, not that he looked any better, but he was a guy who was already here. Maton was supposed to be one of the big additions for a club that really didn't make many. So super disappointed in what he's done so far. And again, this is a guy who's been around a little bit more compared to a Ryan Pepio. So shaky stuff from the bullpen. And we can talk about how they're, they're I know Topkin mentioned yesterday. These guys know each other, been there, done that. But if the bullpen continues to look shaky, right, and you're only being able to bank on two or three of your starters every time you go through the rotation, we're talking about staying, you know, around 500. They're going to be struggling to stay close to that number if this is what the pitching looks like. I know we didn't get to the hitting yet, but if this is what the pitching looks like, they're going to really struggle to stay around 500 until they, quote, unquote, get healthy. You want to go to hitting? Or what, whatever that was yesterday? I, I, I mean, we agree the bullpen's been shaky. That didn't change last night. We agree starters it, have been shaky, too. The starters. Outside of two games. The two games they won, Savali and, and Lotel. that's it. Which means more than half the starters have been shaky. Actually, I wouldn't even say shaky. They've been bad. You look at the runs given up from Eflin in the sixth inning, Pepio yesterday, don't even get me started on whatever the heck we watched on Sunday. It, more of the starters have been bad than good. Um, so that's not great. Hey, but the bats. The bats, Jay. No. Not good either. When you look at the first four guys in the order, whether it's Yandy Diaz, Brandon Lau, Randy Rosarena, or Ahmed Rosario, 0 for 15 yesterday, Ugh. one walk and four Ks. Brutal. Not good. And we were wondering what was going to happen for a guy like Hal Ramirez or a guy like Isak Paredes. Neither one of those guys were in the lineup yesterday. You have to do the job. Three strikeouts yesterday for Yandy Diaz. Now, we spoke a lot about this before the season of Randy Rosarena putting on that weight, Yanni Diaz losing some of that weight. Now, I think a lot of people, us included, only looked at it from one side. Well, Yanni losing weight, for him, that's got to be a good thing. And Randy, him putting on weight, that's that's a cause for concern. I don't. We might be off. We might be off with that assessment. We might need to be looking at, we, we sh- maybe should be looking at this from another perspective of Yandy losing some of that weight, 
maybe that's throwing him off kilter a little bit. Maybe it's quickening the bat up a little bit too much. Maybe he doesn't have the same type of execution that we've seen the last couple of seasons. And maybe the power has been good for Randy Rosarena. He still hit the ball pretty hard last night from what I saw. So Yandy Diaz, as much as we want to say that the pitching is not doing great and there's some guys in the middle of the lineup uh, that aren't doing so well, if Yandy is going 0 for 5 with three strikeouts, I mean, how good do you think the Rays are going to be this season? They're going to struggle big time. Yeah, brought his average all the way down to 263. So uh, not ideal on that end of things. Uh, again, we mentioned how in the first series the reason it was a split and not a sweep for the Jays was because of Diaz, was because of Brandon Lau's yeah. grand slam, because of Randy being able to put up a couple jacks. That series is a lot uglier if those dudes don't hit. This new series against the Rangers has started ugly because those dudes didn't hit. Isak and Harold didn't get into the mix, so they're at least exempt from last night's just from last night debacle. But they're going to get action in these next couple games, and those are guys too that are going to have to step up and hit. I mean, if you're reliant on Richie Palacios to be your big bat in the lineup and Jose Siri to be the guy that's getting on base every single time. Again, you're going to struggle to find wins, and that's with the pitching aside, which is a whole separate box of issues and can of worms. So, man, I, I don't want to overreact. I did say yesterday I wouldn't be surprised if they w- lost this series one to two games. Certainly it looks like they could be on their way to that, depending on how today's action goes, and it's an afternoon. It's a nooner tomorrow before it's a nooner. The, the schedule softens up a little bit for their first road trip in Colorado. But, I mean, man, it's... It's it's gonna be like this. Best case scenario, we're roller coaster up and down a little bit. Worst case, it's gonna be a lot more ugly than pretty. Speaking of ugly, <laughs> you want to go to this guy, Austin Shenton? Oh, I don't know. We're not, are we allowed? Was getting, what happened last night? I didn't see this oh on social my. media. Did you attack? Uh, did you kick his dog okay. or something? What did you do? <laughs> First of all, I would never. You would never. Second of all, I do want to point out that I said heading into the season, Shenton making opening day roster was a weird one to me. It was surprising. I know that guys are banged up, right? We know that they're trying to get some guys that can, you know, maybe bat on different sides of the plate because they're shorthanded there. Maybe trading Luke Rayleigh wasn't the brightest move now as we look back on it, but that's a separate subject for a separate day. I look at Shenton in the mix last night, though. He did walk once, but he was, you know, no hits. He struck out three times, Jay. Um, And he had a couple of moments with batters in, you know, or I should say runners in position to kind of move on and kind of help bring that game and make it a little closer. And he wasn't able to do anything. I I just, and I know they're different positions and I know Junior's banged up now, but it's tough for me to to sleep easy at night as a, as a supporter of this baseball team, knowing Junior Caminero is trying to figure things out in AAA after playing with the big league club, after playing postseason games with the Rays last year, and you're going to roll out a guy in Shenton. And I, somebody on Twitter last night was like, oh, this is the same, you know, conversation we were having about Josh Lowe. And I said, hell no. Josh Lowe, first of all, is a tank. He's 6'4". He's a lot bigger. He was a first-round pick. He was a much more highly touted prospect. Josh Lowe was a guy we expected to make the opening day roster at some point because of where he was in that farm system. Yeah, I don't think you can make the same argument for a guy in Shenton uh, who I don't even think the Dre's race drafted. I think he was drafted, I want to say, by like Detroit or something. He was a part of something else. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that, like, you're telling me that's the best you have out there to roll in on an opening day roster? I know you're banged up. I I, I get all that. But I also know there's a guy in Junior Caminero that's out there waiting to get some opportunities. And I, there's semantics that go into this, right, Jay, because of uh, tenure and time played and blah, 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 blah. I'm watching a guy in Wyatt Langford, and he's not even the only rookie the Texas Rangers have called up. Do you remember all the rookies they had on their team last year that were freaking all-stars? I'm looking at the Baltimore Orioles, who still have studs in AAA. They, AAA, they haven't called up, but they were calling up guys last year, and they have a bunch of youngsters on their team. This is not the same grandfather type of baseball we watched in the 1800s. You can play youngsters a lot sooner now and be okay doing it. No, you can't. Not if you're the race. Apparently. I, do you understand my frustrations with Shenton being Listen, on I, the roster? I watch Austin Shenton, and I look at a guy that looks like a batter, not a hitter. Does that make sense? He's a batter, not a hitter. He's taking these swings where he's like, he's focusing on his keeping his head down. And he's like this. He looks like a batting practice player, like a guy that's like, I, I'm going to perfect my swing to make sure that it's the same every single time. I'm going to keep my head down. And even if the ball changes the direction and trajectory, I'm just going to keep my swing in the same exact spot. And then 
one of I think it was his last strikeout. He finally goes down and goes down to a knee and and swings and misses on a changeup down. I, I just I don't get it. Baseball is so different. It's not like who has the best swing. We talk about pretty swings. We talk about like you know the Gary Sheffields of the world and yeah. the, and the Ken Griffey Juniors of the world. Yeah, that's fine. But you know what the most important thing about it was? They could hit. They were hitters. <laughs> It's not about just going up there and swinging. You got to make contact. And that's what happens when you get the these these guys up there and they want this picture perfect swing. I don't care what your swing looks like. Put the bat on the ball. We've come so far with these three true outcomes. You're either going to strike out, you're going to walk, you're going to hit a home run. Like I'm sorry, that is not the way to succeed. Put the ball in play, especially when you're up with nobody on, I mean, with runners on base, you got to produce, move the baseball, put the ball in play. And for this person out there saying, y'all are overreacting, Yandy Diaz, it's just one game. Hello, have you been watching the Rays or did you just turn on the TV for the first time last night? He's 0 for his last 10. Don't tell me this is one game. We don't just sit here and say whatever the hell we want because we're looking at one game and we're only looking at it from one perspective. We're looking at it from a lot of different perspectives, and you're lying to yourself if you think that this product is okay. The Rays and this benefit of the doubt that we're all giving them, it's ridiculous. This, these, The Rays are not the lightning. Let's not get it twisted. The Rays have gotten progressively worse the last three years when it comes to how far they've gotten in the postseason. And from what we're seeing now, the decisions that have been made and the players that are playing for this team is not good enough. And we can hate on the Yankees all we want. The Yankees are 5-0, and and they are miles ahead of where the Tampa Bay Rays are right now. And it's not even close. And even if they get those guys back in the midseason, do you think they're going to be hitting the ground running? Do we really expect Rasmussen and Springs? We hope for that. But in the words of the 20th century philosopher Z. Blobner, it's the hope that kills you. So we got to start looking at the race for what they are instead of thinking that we can just dig in our pocket and say, well, they've done this the last four or five years. Trust your eyes. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. And it needs to get better because this division is damn good. Boston's playing their ass off right now. Yeah. They are. And we could say, oh, they don't have this. They don't have this. They don't have that. We're going to get to the midpoint of the season. And we're going to go, maybe the Rays didn't have that. They got to pick it up. I know the schedule gets a little bit easier, but you're marked and you're judged against some of the better players and the better teams in this league. And that's not acceptable. I'm sorry. You can't go 0 for 15 in your first four batters and think you're going to compete with the wor defending World Series champs. And what I would say to that is a lot of these frustrations, we could kind of see it coming. And that was my argument last could night. Could you? Well, I, well, Could I, you? Because uh, we were talking about being optimistic and all we keep hearing was, you got to relax, don't overreact and all this stuff. Like, okay. Well, I'm not going to say we knew certain things were going to happen, but we questioned how the weight losses and gains would help or hurt guys like Yandy and Randy. Shenton's a guy who we said when he made the opening day roster was a head scratcher. We didn't get to this part yet, but we talked about defense being suspect with Pinto and Rortvet, who wasn't here a week ago, behind the plate. And you saw last night in Pinto throwing a ball to Rosario that was skipping to the right by a foot or two. It was an awful throw. And it cost him a run. Exactly. Now, that wasn't the run that broke the camel's no, back. No, of course not. But, but it's, it's another piece to the puzzle that's hurt in this put, team right now. Put that whole play together, Zach. Put that whole play together. You got a guy in Rene Pinto who has now played in three-fifths of the game so far this season. Everybody, even Mark Topkin, who covers this team closer than anybody on the planet, mm -hmm. said he was surprised that they split all four games. Mm -hmm. That a guy like Ben Rortved that people don't even know how to say nor spell his name, started two of the first four games of this team that has postseason aspirations. Are we really... You spent the entire spring training with Alex Jackson, a guy that spent the entire preseason getting to know all of these pitchers, and now you're going to go with the guy that was is getting sold off by the Yankees? You think the Yankees are going to trade a team to your division, a uh, player in their division, a guy that they could utilize, or the guy that's you know going to be a long-term answer for this team? And you put him out there and he can't catch a fastball in the first inning of Sean Armstrong? Like, we really got to start looking at this race team and take off the blue, you know, the the rose-colored glasses and start analyzing them for what they are. Rene Pinto, that throw to second base yesterday, skipping that ball right off the edge of awesome the turf toss. there, that's a bad throw. You got to be able to make that throw. You got to be able to make that throw. 
And some people say, oh, Ahmed Rosario. What have I been saying since day one, as soon as they required Ahmed Rosario? Get him reps at shortstop. Get him reps at shortstop. Yep. You put him in there in game five? Yeah. You put him in there in game five and you wonder, all right, well, I, we were there opening day. You know how many ground balls Ahmed Rosario took at shortstop? I didn't see any. But we have like Caballero. We've said he's played well there. To he, be fair, no, I'm not saying I'm not it's saying not he a should knock play on him. It's, it's just, not not at right, all. You're talking about Rosario. It's not a knock at all. But my my question is is if you're telling me that Ahmed Rosario is not good enough to play shortstop, why is he playing Game Five? Yeah, right. It like makes messages. The Razors. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. For with a the team, catchers with the for shortstop. a team that prides themselves on a communication. Yeah. Okay. The things that they're saying, the things that they're doing, the things that they pride themselves on making them successful during some of their best years in existence, we're seeing through five games they're not doing. Yeah. So unless they change the way that they're applying what has made them successful during their entire existence in Major League Baseball, it's going to be a long season. And, and I'll go macro on this real quick here. By the way, love that we're talking baseball, even if it's not the brightest picture right now or conversation. 888-546-4620. The season's back, which is good. Text us on the Barto 4 DE text line 82945. You can also find us on YouTube streaming live, Facebook streaming live. But I, I want to point out as well. They're patchworking this together, partially because of injury, partially because where they're at in the league, they're still the Rays. And I'm telling you right now, the last thing Sternberg wants to hear is the guy spending a $100 payroll because he's brought it up. $100 million. $100 million <coughs> payroll. He said $100. Hey, might as well. <laughs> but, but, but think about it like this. If you're the owner and you're spending more money than you ever have on a payroll, you don't want to hear that it's patchworked together right now. So... And, and the fans don't want to hear that heading into opening day. So they they might not say it out loud. And I still think Eric Nander's the best in the business. And they have a hell of a good front office. It's why you see it poached every offseason. But right now, because of the payroll being higher than it's ever been, just because that's the way it's worked out, and the amount of injuries they're dealing with, the Rays are patchworking it together. And when you're patchworking it together, you're not going to win more than you're going to lose. You're just not. And that's an unfortunate reality. I don't necessarily think that that's going to be how it is all season. And again, with a softer schedule, yeah, maybe you can win a little bit more than you're losing coming up here. But when you're playing the Blue Jays for four, out the gates, and the Rangers for three, it's going to be uglier more often than it's pretty. And that's just unfortunate when you're patchworking a roster right now. Shout out to Jose Siri, though. Love the swag. And he's really Hold come on, to play just went off this year. That. Yeah, I know mine too. <laughs> Sorry. Siri, uh, Siri, raise up. Siri, how many hits does Jose Siri have this year? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, no. here's what I found. There it is. You have a winter league stat. I don't want a winter league stat. He's been 214. <laughs> Wait a second. I like how we swung the bat yesterday. That's all I was talking about, Siri. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, it was 294. Siri, you're lying to me. 294, Siri. yep. OBP 400. Two for three yesterday. Uh, he's got a hit in uh, four of the five games. Uh, I think Jose Siri should be moved to the nine hole. Put him there as a double leadoff. Put him there right in front of Wander Franco. And if you can do something like that, I think that could jumpstart this offense. I know when you look at Jose Siri, he's got some, you know, pop in the bat. So you want him kind of in the seven spot like they had him last night. But put him at nine. Put him at nine so we can be almost that double leadoff hitter. You get Yandi being able to hit with some runners on base. And let's say you walk Yandi. Mm -hmm. Be loud, doesn't do the job. Now you have Randy Rosarena on with a couple of runners on base. I'm telling the Rays, keep an eye out. Jose Siri in the nine hole. Co-sign okay. that. We'll switch it up a little bit. When we come back on the other side, we're going to talk some lightning hockey. Eric Erlens in lightninginsider.com. I picked up the Siri on my laptop now here, too. I can't <laughs> win. Uh, last night's game against the Red Wings. Just a little blip on the radar or a cause for concern. We'll ask Double E, lightninginsider.com, when we come back. Today, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner. Home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the Texas Rangers. Coverage starts at 530 on the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Oh. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. WDAE traffic update. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. Stop and go traffic in Polk County on westbound I-4 from Memorial Boulevard to Charlie Taylor Road. Five-minute delays. Typical stop and go traffic in Tampa on westbound I-4 
From the Salmon Connector to the junction with I-275, Riverview crash with blockage reported on southbound 301 at Simmons Loop. And we've got stop-and-go traffic on the westbound Clearwater Memorial Causeway, heading to Clearwater Beach from Fort Harrison to the roundabout, 20-minute delays. Amy Snyder, News Radio WFLA. This report is sponsored by Fresh from Florida. Hey guys, Chef Justin with Fresh from Florida here, reminding you that from blueberry pancakes to blueberry smoothies, almost everything is better with Florida blueberries. In season now, look for Fresh from Florida blueberries at your local grocery store. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Tuesday, April 2nd. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Tuesday, April 2nd. 813-219-1919. Looking for a fun-filled day with your loved ones? Look no further than Pin Chasers. At Pin Chasers, we've been guaranteeing a great time for over 65 years. Whether you're a family, kids, or young adults, Pin Chasers is the place to be. Enjoy exciting bowling, delicious food, and nonstop fun under one roof. Visit our website at pinchasers.net to learn more and plan your unforgettable outing at Pin Chasers. It's guaranteed fun, or it's on us. Hey there, Tampa Bay. It's Steve and Elizabeth Holland at the Holland Group. We want to talk to you about the importance of tax planning, or as we like to call it, the art of legally keeping your money away from Uncle Sam. With 30 years of experience, we realize there are tax strategies you may not know about. If done properly, we can save you real money. So call the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, serving Tampa Bay since 1993. 727-228-6449. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Biana's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Ah, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audibel Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audibel Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. Jessica, this is the happiest day of my life. Right up there with the day I bought my RV and insured it with Progressive. Man, I love that thing. (laughs) There are a million fish in the sea, which I'm reminded of every time I bring my RV to the lake, but I vow to love and cherish you just as much as I cherish campsites with full electric and water hookups. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Protect your beloved with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. You know what's nice about working with Farrah and Farrah on your personal injury case? We worry about all the details, so you don't have to. Fair and Farrah, here to make it easy. Tampa. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial-free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American idiot. 
a commercial-free look back to alternative from the 2000s. We Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free, never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free, never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anajar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Go for the second time this period. Anthony Sorelli has a goal taken off the board. And it stays again, 1-0, and there's still 23 Let's seconds. Let's try it again. Here they go again. Short-handed, Sorelli shoots, scores! Boom! Valley Sports TV call there with Dave Randorf and Brian Ingblom. He'll try again. What a great clip as we hear the lightning. And look, Anthony Sorelli, uh, they didn't, They took the first shorthanded goal away. So a few seconds later, he was like, well, we will try again. And that one counted. Unfortunately, the Bolts ultimately lose the game 4-2. to two. I, I don't feel nearly as upset about this loss as the Rays because that game really did come down to the wire and the Lightning were swarming. We're going to break it down even more right now with LightningInsider.com's Eric Erlinson on the Central Florida Behavioral Health Network DAE hotline. Learn more at CFPHN.org. Double E, what's up, brother? Welcome into the program. How are you? I'm good, gentlemen. How's it going? We're good. We're hanging out and we're talking about the Bolts here that, again, they did lose last night, E, but... Four to two, I don't think that's indicative of how that game was going. And it felt like a lot of that third period, it was only a matter of time before the Lightning scored uh, the go-ahead goal. That didn't happen, obviously. But your reaction to the result yesterday? Um, yeah, they played well. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, certainly in that third period, your reference there, you know, there was a shift where the puck was in the offensive zone. It felt like for two and a half minutes straight. Like they were able to make a line change and a defensive zone change and or a defensive change and everything else. Like, it did feel like it was trending towards the Lightning are going to win this game. So they put themselves into a position to do that. But on the flip side of it, you know, when you get into late season games, specifically playoff type games, and that was a playoff game for Detroit. They lost that game. They're pretty much done. They have no chance of making the playoffs. So when you get into those type of games, your attention to detail has to be hyper-focused and, you look at two of the goals the Red Wings scored, you lose your focus for a little bit, and that happens, right? The second goal was off of a turnover right inside the offensive blue line. Uh, Matt Dumba loses a, a battle along the boards. Braden Point peels off this guy in front of the net. Those type of things can't happen in those type of games. So, yes, they played well, but, you know, you can't lose a clean face-off draw late in the game like uh, Braden Point did uh, that set up the game-winning goal. Like those things, you have to be a lot more focused and detail-oriented to make sure those don't happen when the games, you know, matter more. Double E, a really good march uh, for the crew, 9-1-1. One, and one. What, what would you say the expectations are uh, for the rest of the regular season here? What's the main focus for John Cooper and the crew? Munch points, clinch that spot. You know, I, I think if you talk to anybody uh, in the locker room or, you know, in, in the front office staff, it's, you know, just win games, just pick up points, make sure you get that little X by your name uh, in the standing so that you've clinched the playoff spot. That's going to come. I, I think it's inevitable at this point. That's going to happen. It's just a question of when, and then you let everything else take care of itself. Like, you know, you, you work on making sure those details I just mentioned are sort of sort of fine tuned a little bit. And you kind of get into that mentality of having that approach to the game because, um, you know, this team is not as deep as it has been of years past. We've discussed that throughout the season. So you don't have the margin of error that maybe you had before. Um, so I, I think that's the biggest thing that this team needs to do is just continue to find ways to, to win some games, pick up some points, wherever you finish is where you finish, whoever you play is who you play, but just make sure the details are, are kind of straightened out. Uh, one of the youngsters there, Lilleberg, I loved when he burst onto the scene and then it kind of you know went downhill there for a smidge. I thought he played a great game last night, though. How have you seen him evolve uh, over the last few months here? Well, I mean, me and Jay were talking about it up in the press box last night that he just looks like a different player right now than he did right before he was sent down around the trade deadline. 
He looks more confident. I think he understands the game at this level a little bit better than he did before. He's taken some of the risk out of his game. His reads are better. He's shooting the puck more. I mean, he's taken a huge step forward here, you know, just in a short period of time from, you know, the amount of games he had before the break and, you know, before they, you know, acquired Matt Dumba, sent him back down to Syracuse for a little bit, bring him back up, give him a chance to watch a couple games and then get into the lineup. He's been fantastic. And, he brings a physical element. He's a big body. Uh, he was out there killing some penalties last night when Victor Hedlund was the guy in the box. So there's a lot about his game that's evolving. So I think there's still a lot more to his game that we're going to see. But what we've seen here in the last couple of weeks has been great. Eric Erlinson, LightningInsider.com, joining us here on JNZ. And, Double E, i got to ask you about the switch that we saw at the end of the game last night. Anthony Duclair, pointless in the last three games. Um sliding down to that third line, playing with Nick Paul and Mikey Asamont, and Mitchell Shafee sliding up to that left-wing spot to play with Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov. What did you make of that change, and do you think that's something we could see going forward? Uh, I, I never try and put too much stock into what the lines look like, right, because John Cooper is apt to change them, uh, you know, throughout a game and, and throughout the course of, of the season. So, uh, but it was interesting that it was Chafee that got moved up. And, you know, normally you're you're swapping the top six guys, right? So in this case, he moved Chafee from quote-unquote line three up to line one. And again, when you listen to John Cooper, when he's asked questions like that, what's the, what's the one thing he brought up again involving Mitchell Chafee? Winning his battles. It's a big thing with John Cooper. It's a big thing he likes to see in younger players. Mitchell Chafee does a really good job of that. He knows how to get to the net. So, you know, you have a guy that's going to win some of those battles along the wall and can win those pucks and get him to a Nikita Kucherov, get him to a Braden Point. I think that's what he's looking for. And then the other part of that is, too, is, you know, you, you want these things in the back of your mind, right, as a coach. Okay, can Mitchell Chafee play with top-line guys? Can he be somebody who slots in if I have to put him there and play with a point in Kucherov? Is he capable of doing that? And I think for the brief period of time, that we saw that trio together last night? The answer right now is yes. I'm starting to hesitantly, slowly, buy stock. Uh-oh. And Tanner, as you Uh-oh. know. Here we go. Slow- hey, everybody relax. They're penny Here stocks. Here we go. They're penny <laughs> stocks and Tanner, as you know. But I am on the board. Uh, Eric, it, it, talk about the impact Tanner's making on the ice, that key part at the end there. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, as, as, as I've been trying to let you know, his <laughs> presence... That was so Thanks. nice. That was such a nice way for you to say, Thanks, I Eve. told you, Zach. Hey, there's still time to go here. I told you so, let's, Zach. Let, let's let's take a breath and just enjoy it while it's happening. We are. We are. Go ahead, E. Uh, so what you see from Janot is the difference he can make in a game. Is it going to show up on the score sheet? Not in the way that many people want it to happen, right? We, we're looking at his 24 goals and say, hey, I need a 20-goal score. And that would be fantastic. But the other areas of the game, when you're talking about – filling out a roster. There was a play in the game against the Islanders the other night where it was a puck going in the Islanders defensive zone and Tanner Janot is the first four checker in. And that defenseman looked over his shoulder. He saw 84 coming. He couldn't get out of there fast enough. He, he, he pulled away from the hit. So he didn't actually get hit, but it's in your mind. I don't want to be hit by 84, right? So you see that you see some of the open ice hits that he's had since he's come back when he's playing his game, that's the difference he makes, right? And Brian Engblom says it all the time. Intimidation is still a part of this game. Tanner Janot is an intimidating figure, not just because he can fight. You know he can fight. And it's, I don't understand why guys even try and fight him anymore. But it's the physical part of the game. And when you're talking about uh, a potential seven-game playoff series, if that guy is continually forechecking that way and just pounding the other team's defense, those those moments can make a difference in a playoff series. There's so many little things that can make a difference in a playoff series, and that's one of them. So that's what he can bring to the ice when he's at the top of his game, and he's not there yet, but you're seeing it. Yeah, it's such a, a possible big impact, and that bottom six looks so much different now after the trade and after him coming back from injury. That's Eric Erlinson, LightningInsider.com. That's Eric underscore Erlinson. That's a K, not a C, two S's after the D. Go to LightningInsider.com. Sign up today. Use that promo code JNZ. Get $10 off. 
not just this year, but every recurring season after that. Now is the best time to sign up for LightningInsider.com. Yep. Nobody has covered this team for as long as Double E. And as we get to the playoffs, Eric keeps churning out this fantastic content. E, we appreciate your time Thanks, as always, Eric. and uh, we'll talk to you again next week, buddy. All right. Sounds good, boys. Be well. You too, man. Eric Erlinson, LightningInsider.com. Who knows? Maybe I'll start to turn those penny stocks into quarter stocks and... By the end of uh, the regular season, I'll have some dollar bills on Tanner. Look at Jeanneau. you. Look at you. Jeanneau. Jeanneau there. Don't go anywhere, though, because on the other side, Ooh. we're going to hit the hardwood. Yeah, it was a that tough. Was, yeah. Stretched it. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it wasn't It was smooth. So, yeah, you know. You know what was good, though? The game last <laughs> there you night. Go. How about it? Women's match. Mardness. Iowa over LSU. The final four is all set. And Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese was every bit as promised. Did you watch? Did you love it? In the big conversation, just what does Caitlin Clark, Clark's season mean? Where does it end up in the grand scheme of everything? That's next here on Jay and Zach. Ready for a visual feast of sports talk? WDAE's Drive with T-Crash, Pat and Aaron, and Jay and Zach are now streaming live on YouTube. Search WDAE, smash that like button, and subscribe for your front row pass to all the action. WDAE on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Ford. The college basketball playoffs have always been one of my favorite times of the sporting year. Why? It's a chance for a small town school to beat a perennial powerhouse. Bartow Ford has been that underdog, outselling big city dealerships every single day, every single year. We only do this by teamwork and taking care of our customers. It's just another way at Bartow Ford we're different and we prove it. In anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out. MarkSpain.com for the guaranteed offer. No obligation. That's MarkSpain.com and start packing. The future of medicine Medicine is here at QC Kinetics. Hey guys, T. Kraz here from my guys over at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. It's called regenerative medicine, guys. So if you're tired of those achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love doing, you got to call my guys over at QC Kinetics. I did. They fixed my elbow. They fixed my knee. They could do the same for you. No surgery, no steroids, no drugs. They are a thing of the past. Regenerative medicine is where it's at, and they can deliver lasting results. They can use your own body's biologics to restore and repair damaged joint tissue, and that's what QC Kinetics will do. So get your life back, guys. Call them. QC Kinetics. Get a free consultation. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you going again with no downtime. 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. QC Kinetics. Locations in Bradenton, Lakeland, St. Pete, and Brandon. Tell me your boy T-Crass sent you. WDAE with What's Up Tampa Bay. Bowl with Crash and AJ at 98 Rocks. Bowling for balls at Pin Chasers on April 13th. For tickets and more info, visit 98rock.com. Join us April 5th through 7th at Armature Works in the Heights District for the WFLA News Channel 8 Outdoors Expo and Boat Show. Admission is free all weekend. Visit WFLA.com slash Outdoors Expo for more details. Stay on top of everything going on at 953WDAE.com. Hi, this is Earl Ron, president of New South Window. New South is having a one-day factory sale this Saturday only in our factory showroom. 40% off energy-efficient windows and patio doors. One day only this Saturday from 9 till 4. Please visit us at NewSouthWindow.com. Your perfect closet starts with the right finishing touches. And during the light and accessory event at California Closets, every $1,500 of design, lighting, and accessories you buy earns you $500 toward your custom design. Visit one of their three showrooms or CaliforniaClosetsTampaBay.com to book your free design consultation. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. We now have more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Protecting America. Fighting for you. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Good Greek moving is so rich. Your superhero movers. Hold up. 
Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports. Shouting go Bulls with horns raised for over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Here's Clark. Clark pulls up another deep one. He's good! I mean, it's just insane what we were watching last night. Caitlin Clark in Iowa, Angel Reese in LSU, all eyes glued to that TV screen, and then followed by Paige Beckers in UConn and Juju Watkins in USC. Like, you're talking about one, I think, one of the more memorable nights when it comes to women's college troops that we've seen in our lifetime. And now you're looking at a Final Four of undefeated South Carolina against NC State. Shout out to the Wolfpack having a team in the Final Four, both the men's and women's, and as well as UConn. And in the other Final Four matchup, UConn and Iowa, Zach, what just two incredible matchups. Yeah, I'm pumped. I, I love the games yesterday. I, watching Iowa and LSU, tough only because the Rays and Lightning were going on at the same time. Not that they couldn't all be on at the same time, but trying to focus on what was going on in each. I actually felt like LSU was playing the better game until Angel Reese had to step out for a few minutes. She went, you know, past the bucket and it got a little banged up and had to sit out. It was like four or five minutes. It felt like she was out. And that momentum just completely fell off a cliff. And then, obviously, Caitlin Clark started heating up, and that was, for the most part, all she wrote, literally and figuratively there. Uh, but I thought the game was fantastic. A lot of back and forth. They just don't call fouls, really, in the women's game, it feels like, because they were tough. hacking, bro. Hacking. And he felt like both sides. And obviously, you know, Caitlin's a great shooter, but Angel Reese is down low. And I'm like, whether she's on defense just, like, strong-arming you or she's on offense and she's like, I'm just going to go up and get my own rebound. They had out-rebounded him, like, 40 to 10 at one point. But they were losing because Caitlin Clark's Caitlin Clark. She's on another level. And I know we spoke about this yesterday, and this was uh, maybe not the greatest question going into March Madness. What what was more exciting? What was more intriguing, the men's or the women's tournament? Let's re-ask the question now. What's more intriguing? The women's Final Four or the men's Final Four? I think that's a better question than saying the entire tournament because you know there's only three games left on each side. Mm-hmm. So is it UConn against Alabama and Purdue against NC State on the men's side? Or is it South Carolina and NC State and UConn and Iowa on the women's side? I think that's a much better argument than the one that we had in the beginning because – there was just so many different games. Now it's limited down to three and three. And you could argue that the most intriguing game is probably going to be the final four matchup between Iowa and UConn. It's not even close. Right? It's not even that close. crazy. However, I will say that thinking about, and we talked about this in the beginning of the yesterday, beginning of the week, 24 hours ago. <laughs> it uh, was the beginning. You're not wrong. <laughs> we talked about how UConn-Purdue would be a Goliath matchup. Right. So even though South Carolina has been undefeated and great, even though Caitlin Clark and Iowa are doing their thing, and that would be, I think, the premier matchup you'd want if you're the women's bracket and for entertainment purposes. I think even with that star power and that level of awesomeness, I still am going to watch more, I, I think, on the edge of my seat, the Purdue-UConn potential matchup. But yeah, in terms of the final four games that are on slate, the, the, the four of them that we have between the two sides— it is Caitlin Clark and Iowa taking on Paige uh, Buckets, as they call her, in UConn. Like, it's it's those two. It's another great matchup. And for me, I think about it a lot. I bring movies up a lot when I talk about sports. And I say every great sport run or playoff has a great villain. I talk about villains a lot. Whether you love or hate her, Angel Reese and LSU were a great villain for whatever your reasoning. And I'm just speaking to sports. I, I don't like to go outside. I know other people have their own opinions on you know, what those women do off the court and what they portray. I'm focused on the game that I watched last night and how LSU played into the villain role. They, you know, whether it's the coach, whether it's Angel Reese, whether it's the rest of the team, whether it's just Louisiana in general. And how Caitlin Clark trash talked a lot too. You could even say, you know, I'm sure there's people that see her as a villain type. For me, I just thought it was a great story. I thought that they added to it. And now I'm looking at another example was two superstars in Paige Buckets. I don't think she's a villain. But she's another hero that can go up against the Caitlin Clark. So I, I see it in movie terms, um, and you couldn't have built this better. 
for Caitlin Clark's path and what we've watched so far in this tournament on the I, women's side. I love trash talk. I really do, especially in, in hoops. I mean, it's a physical game, and it's not for the faint of heart. You want a bunch of choir boys and girls and just, you know, the nice people, and all they're going to do is glad hand and just, hey, great job and have great sportsmanship all the time. That is lame. Give me trash talk. Give me some vitriol. Give me people that don't like each other. Give me drama. Give me entertainment. This is why we watch sports. We don't watch sports so everybody's, you know, the greatest person in the world. Like, that's it's unrealistic. If you've ever played sports, if you've ever lived a freaking life where you interact with other people, not everybody's the same. Not everybody's the greatest human being. Not everybody is the most humble person. There's people out there that are cocky as hell. And there's people out there that talk smack. And I love it. I love it because it's different. That's what life is. It's different. But what we're seeing right now, we are seeing something right now in Caitlin Clark mm -hmm. that has only been rivaled in our lifetime. Maybe a guy like Steph Curry changing the game. The way that the game became more of a perimeter game when Steph Curry came into the NBA and shooting threes from 30 feet out. We're seeing Caitlin Clark have a similar impact in the college game for the women. And I'm going to bring this up. I said this before the show, and I'm going to I'm going to say it again here on air with everybody here. Caitlin Clark has the opportunity to have the greatest season ever in the history of college basketball. Not just for women. I'm talking men and women. Stay with me here. Caitlin Clark could have the best season in the history of college basketball, and here's how. She just beat LSU, the defending national champions. Check. Coming up next on Friday night, She's going against the greatest women's basketball coach of all time in Gino Oriema. Check. Paige Beckers, we know how good she is. And UConn, the best program in the history of women's college basketball. And then going into the final. Potentially. Potentially. She's going to play an undefeated South Carolina team with Dawn Staley at the helm Check. that you could argue over the last three or four seasons, clearly the number one team in college basketball on the women's side. So if Caitlin Clark ends up beating in succession LSU, UConn, and South Carolina, she has the opportunity to go down and, and and to show everybody out there that is what the greatest season in college basketball history looks like. And I I dare to say I doubt that'll ever. I'll, I'll say it right now. If she does that, I don't see anybody ever doing that ever again. And I think that that's all fair and validated. And, and I follow your line of thinking. For me, though... I'm just like, I'm going to enjoy the, the Just movie, enjoy the ride. Right? Like, yeah. it, it, and I think we, societally here in our sports bubble, are always trying to, like, crown or, or put things, in, especially in our sports radio, it's part of what we do. So I get it. I do. And I don't say this as a knock to you in any capacity. But for me, I'm just like, give, You're me, just enjoying the ride. give me popcorn, put me in front of a TV, and let me see this next game. I'm with you. As and I think that speaks to where they're at, though. Because for me, and I know during the season, people were like, is she better than Pistol Pete Maravich? And I'm like, I don't care. You know what I want? I want her draining nine threes against Angel Reese and LSU. Yeah. I want her and Paige Buckets exchanging that buckets at the end of the UConn game upcoming. I want to see her and Don Staley's squad clash in the championship. And you know what? We can have that chat after. We can look at whatever she does in the WNBA and really figure out how big her impact can be at the pro level when we get there. I want what's in front of me. And it's not, again, to knock the things you're saying because I think they're viable things, Jay. But I'm just, I'm enjoying what's on TV so much that I'm cool with it. Yeah, it's wild that you don't even need the comparison right. to enjoy it. Right. Right. And, and I'm with you. I, I think those, I think when you throw things out like that and there's really no way to tell. Yeah. Right? How can you really tell if Caitlin Clark is better than Pistol Pete Maravich? You can't. It's so tough, man. Talking about a guy that played decades ago. But one thing that you can compare is you can compare Caitlin Clark and what she has the capability of doing in these three games because nobody's ever done it before. Go look it up. Go research it when it comes to college basketball. Nobody has ever back-to-back-to-back to back to back beaten the defending national champions, the greatest coach of all time, and an undefeated basketball team. Nobody's ever done that in college hoops. If Caitlin Clark does that, best season ever, no doubt, no argument. All right, good stuff there on college hoops. When we come back, more race talk. Our guy, Denard Span, is going to join us in studio for our weekly chat. You don't want to miss this one. It's Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620.
It's a Tampa Bay tradition unlike any other. Well, sort of. It's back. The Drive Night Out with t Crash. Score yourself a pair of tickets to hang out with t Crash at the Trop and a Suite at Tropicana Field. And get the VIP treatment for food, drinks, swag, and so much more as the Rays take on the Giants. Be listening all week to win. Presented by your Tampa Bay Rays and 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. WDAE Traffic Update. Typical slow traffic in Tampa on westbound I-4 from the Salmon Connector to the junction with I-275. And there's a Riverview accident on southbound 301 at Simmons Loop that has road blockage. Clearwater stop and go on the westbound Memorial Causeway heading to Clearwater Beach from Myrtle Avenue to the roundabout 20-minute delays. Tarpon Springs crash, Huey Avenue at MLK Drive. With traffic... I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by eBay Motors. eBay Motors is here for the ride with the parts you need at the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they're guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Believe it or not, most small businesses don't have a 401k. If you don't have a 401k, you are missing out on the greatest wealth creation tool ever created. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and many 401ks are overpriced for the employer, have expensive and underperforming investment options, and have tedious administrative provisions. Not at Trajan Wealth. We can set up a 401k for a company for only 8 bucks per employee, a $65 per plan fee, plus a small advisory fee. That's right, not thousands or even the tens of thousands you've been quoted. And do it all in less time than it takes to sit in traffic. If you have five or more employees, these 401ks will help you attract and retain top talent. And if you're an employee and don't have a 401k, tell your boss, call Trajan Wealth today. Call 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Services offered through a third-party partner. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Tuesday, April 2nd. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Tuesday, April 2nd. 813-219-1919. This March, it's time to join the winning team for your home loan needs. I'm Zach Blobner here on behalf of Howard Team Home Loans at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Right now, homeowners' debt is madness with credit card rates through the roof. It's time to march into those savings with Howard Team Home Loans and see what options work best for you. John and his team can coach you on your individual needs. It's time to break away from those high rates. So get off the bench and experience the slam dunk of a deal with home loans by getting started at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Lower LLC and MLS 1124061. Equal housing opportunity. Terms and conditions apply some things in life you can just rely on like the faithful friend who always comes when you call your fishing buddies and the tried and true performance of a new rude home ac system so here's to reliability built into everything we do rely on rude get reliable cooling and comfort installed by a certified rude pro partner go to rudeacflorida.com to schedule service with a rude pro partner today that's rudeacflorida.com powered locally by ferguson hvac guys the summer is right around the corner get ready to dive into it with my guys over at pool perfection tampa bay's premier luxury pool builder they will get your pool up and running they can build it in weeks not months go online there are plenty of five-star google reviews thousands of happy customers tampa bay's most trusted pool builder is Pool Perfection. So call them now. You get a free estimate and a 3D design of what your new pool will look like. Call them 727-518-7665. That's 727-518-POOL. Men suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? Frustrated taking pills that don't work? 
Here's a message from Prestige Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prestige Men's Medical Center now. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. In this week's Marketers Report, we hear about the importance of local radio from Allison Griffin, head of marketing at State Farm. iHeart has such a broad broadcast reach that is local and for us to be able to touch customers with a local feel but at a national scale is so efficient and important for us. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to the audiences, trusted influencers, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. Hi, this is Quentin. A little thing I love about Chick-fil-A chicken strips are how satisfying they are. The chicken strips are amazing. They're always filling, crispy, tender, and juicy. Definitely one of my favorite things on the menu, especially when you add in that Chick-fil-A sauce. Always the perfect combination. And then personally, you know me, I'm getting a four count. I want as much chicken as possible. I'm that guy. Whenever I get them, whether it be lunch or for dinner, in my household, is always a winner. <laughs> Order the chicken strips on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real customer paid for their testimonial. Enjoy lunch or dinner today at Kelly's Roast Beef, the iconic taste of Boston, home of the original roast beef sandwich. Plus, authentic New England seafood, chicken sandwiches, burgers, dogs, ice cream, kids' meals, and more. All freshly made with gluten-free options, too. Dine in or drive through today at Kelly's Roast Beef. Mention this ad and get a free Kelly scratch card for special discounts or free food. Stop by today at University and Honore in Sarasota and just northeast of Pasadena and Shore Drive in St. Pete. Kelly's Roast Beef. Your home sold in 14 days, guaranteed at DuncanDuo.com. Have you downloaded the free iHeartRadio app yet? Just think you could take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all on one app. Free never, never sounded, sounded so, so good. good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. The reigning, defending, and undisputed home of Tampa Tampa Bay Bay Sports Sports Talk Talk for over 20 20 years. We are 95.3 FM W237CW Pinellas Park. 95.7 HD3 WBTP Clearwater. 96.7 FM W224BE Brent. And the, and the mighty, mighty 620, 620 WDAE St. Petersburg. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, hey, hey Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay. Free has never sounded so good. All right, welcome back. Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. And we are joined, like we are every Tuesday at 1 p.m. with the one and only Denard Span, D Span. Uh, pretty soon you're just going to be known as the dad because every single one of your kids is just balling out on all your Instagram videos. Like, event, you had a great career, your wife had a great career, but eventually you're just going to be the parents of some awesome athletic kids. That you know what? That, Did I that's, see your daughter too swinging it? Yeah, she's she's starting to swing the bat already. Watch out now, one, one and a half years old, and you know that that's the plan. You know, I want people to forget about me. You know, in about another ten years, I want everybody in the in the city of Tampa to to know who. Um, the young spam boys are, and so you know they they love playing baseball, they love playing sports and being active, and um, as long as they love it, you know I'm gonna push them. The span fam, that's it's it. Like, that's right, man. That's awesome. Uh, so what's been up, man? How was your weekend? What'd you guys do? Anything good? Uh, it was real chill. Um, good Easter? Th- yeah, we did. We had a really good Easter. My my in laws are in town. Nice. And, and uh, my mom and my brother they came over to the house, and we had a little um, Easter hibachi. I saw okay. that. That's kind of become like one of our traditions we've done wow. over the last three years. It kind of started around COVID. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of those guys were, you know, that's how they were making money, right? Mm-hmm. Was, was doing the in-home. The kids loved it, didn't they? They did. They <laughs> did. So it, it, it was a good time. We, you know, we enjoyed that and enjoyed family. You know, lots of laughs, laughter and, and fun. I, I wish the uh, the Rays had a little bit more fun on their <laughs> opening series. Uh, I to, knew we were going there. I, I mean, it, no. it, it, and here's the thing. Let's go. We, we know they've got injuries, yep. right? We, we know it's the early part of the year. Yep. So Jay and I are trying very hard to yep. straddle the line of, like, not overreacting, but yep. also being fairly critical of areas that it, it feels like there can be just some, like, 
bigger takeaways that you had through the first five games now yeah. that we've watched? Yeah, I would say, obviously, you know, you don't want to jump the gun. I'm similar to what you just said. It's only five games in, but from what I've seen, you know, you can have somewhat of a small picture of what is to come. A lot of injuries um, that they've had to, you know, tap into the depth of their team, which is not that deep. Let's, let's just go mm-hmm. ahead and call a not spade. Not this year. <laughs> let's call a spade a spade. A yeah. lot of these guys that are playing, they were hoping they were going to be in Triple A um, with Josh Lowe down, Aranda, and a couple other guys. Um, but for me, what I I saw in the first five games, which is the gaping um, hole, I guess you could say, is what we're not used to seeing from this ball club is the starting pitching. Yeah, you know, over the last five years, this team has you know been in the postseason and and they've always had um, a, an elite ace caliber pitcher, one or two of those guys dating back to Blake Snell, mm-hmm. Tyler Glass. Now, uh, when they, when Blake Snell got traded, who who stepped in? Shane McClanahan. So right, those guys yeah. are hurt. We obviously traded Tyler Glass now, and so now you know it, it just looks different, which which is a concern for me because this ball club has always been based upon pitching and defense, yeah. right? And this is the first time where you're looking at the offense. The offense, I think, is better than the, than the pitching, which yeah. is not the way the team is is you know traditionally been built upon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's a great point. And then, you know they are scuffling, but I mean I think as a whole you're right. Like you look at Yandi and Randy and. And we expect Isak and Harold to be able to perform better. But right now, it seems like they're probably more reliable than the pitching, which is kind of backwards when you that's think not, about it. That's not the way the ball the club is made. Uh, and it, it's tough to yeah. win that way because yeah. eventually, come playoff time, you got to be able to pick it. you got to be able to throw it. Um, yeah, for a lack of an ace, you've been on teams uh, over the years where I'm sure you've had – you know, the fact the guy that's the ace, the stopper. You're on a three game losing streak, that guy comes in and it just it stops. I'm sure you've been on some teams where maybe the ace wasn't as strong. What does that mean for a club when you have that one guy knowing like, hey, even if we are scuffling, this guy's gonna come out and at the very least throw six, seven, eight innings and give us a chance to win? It's he's invaluable. You know, there's a reason why there's only, you know, a handful of guys around the league. There's no disrespect to who's on the starting rotation now. Mm-hmm. But it's like in the NFL, there's only, you know, a handful of quality QBs in the league, and the right. rest of the guys are pretty much middle of the row. And that's still no disrespect to those quarterbacks. Yeah. It's the same thing with the starting pitching. And so, you know, when you have those guys that can go seven or eight innings, you know, once every five days, it, it, it's obviously setting the tone for the next week. It's giving the you know the middle middle part of the bullpen and the 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 back end of the bullpen a, a break as well, and you know it just you know just knowing that you have that guy who can stop the bleeding, um, if you're in a, in a little bit of a skid, like I said, it's 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 invaluable, and you know it's I've seen you know ace type caliber pitchers you know turn or, or change the whole trajectory of 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 a ball club. You know, it's interesting because if we, I, I know we talked to you last week, but if we would have talked to you right after opening day, we would have said, well, it looks like Diaz, the weight off is is all good. Randy yeah. didn't have any hits in that first game. Yeah. We move ourselves forward four games, and Jay and I were talking in the first segment. I wonder if we had it the other way around because Diaz is now 0 for 10 in his last at-bats, and Randy's obviously been able to hit the ball a little bit more. Yeah. Um, we're wondering if with Yandi losing a little bit weight, what were you saying, Jay? He like he's been in front of some of the pitches. It yeah. seems like on the strikeouts versus last year, where he was he was able to kind of find it back in his stance. So I think a lot of the mindset of this whole thing was all right. Yandy's going to lose weight. That's mm-hmm. going to be good for him. He's going to have less injuries. He's carrying around less weight. It's a long season. But Randy carrying a little bit more weight. He more susceptible. Maybe it'll slow him down. Right. He may be more susceptible to injuries. But I don't think enough people, us included, yeah. looked at the opposite of maybe the extra muscle for Randy is good. Like that second home run, that's on the middle part of the plate, and he's able to stay inside the ball and drive it out to right center, which you know, like, there's only a few people on the planet that can take an inside pitch and drive the ball out to right center field like that and hit it over the fence. Forearm shot, And I wonder if a guy like Yandy, where you lose a little bit of weight, and maybe your bat speed's a little quicker, and he's a guy that predicates himself on letting the ball travel, hitting the ball to the right side. Not saying he can't fix it, but I think... Maybe he's just a little bit too quick at this time. Is is that a possibility where he has to kind of readjust to his new body type? Yeah, I, I you know, as you're talking, I'm, my my wheels are spinning. You know, I, I've 
seen guys who play better, heavier, for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Yeah. You think about CeCe Zabathia. I think he tried to lose a bunch of weight, mm-hmm. and he sucked. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I think he came out, and he, he was said like, it too. He was he like, I can't it. do this. I got to go back to <laughs> yeah. eating my buffet and, yeah, and, 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 right. and, and putting on some weight. And, you know, sometimes when you have that weight, you do, you know, feel strong. And, and like you said, you feel like you can, you know, let a ball travel a little deeper and, you know, still have the ability to to drive the ball um, wherever the, wherever it's pitched. Um, you know, for Yandi, you know, I, I think, you know, it is going to be an adjustment. This is something that he's never probably done in his career as far as, you know, losing weight and um, having to play at this at, at, at this new, um, you know, body physique that he, he's playing at. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of positives, but, you know, I think time will tell if, you know, this works for him or not. Um, you know, you, you know, you lose weight. You talk about, you know, now, you know, it's a different energy. Like, you know, your body, you know, is um, – just doesn't have the same calories or, you know, mm-hmm. the same calorie intake or whatever. Um, so, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I think it's, 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 it's a case by case. Did, case, did you yeah. ever make it a, a big adjustment like that? Whether One it's way diet, or the other. whether it's diet, whether it's weight, did you ever, cause we hear guys at times like they go yeah. Prince Fielder, went yeah. vegan, right? Like, yeah. it, have, yeah. did you do anything drastic like that during your career? I was always trying to gain weight. I was always really? a, a thinner, you know, uh, just thinner by nature. And so I would say, you know, out of my 11 years, I was always trying to gain weight up until maybe my last year where I was 34, 35. <laughs> the metabolism started to slow down a little bit. And I was like, all right, maybe I shouldn't eat these these French fries mm-hmm. at, at, at midnight. You yeah. know what I mean? So like trying to cut out the carbs um, and stuff like that, because I would feel sluggish and, and, and things like that. But um, nothing super dramatic, if you will. To where you know I, I made a 360 degree turn in, um, as far as you know losing or gaining weight. Interesting. Well, we'll definitely continue to revisit yeah. it. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Uh, something to keep an eye on. For yeah. Definitely. I, and I think we, again, a lot of what Jay and I have already talked about today is these are things that we already referenced before opening day. So we're just going to kind of keep an eye on them yeah. as we move forward. I want to get your thoughts from a base running standpoint because I thought yesterday's game was really interesting. You had Jose Siri who has already stolen a few bases. He's yeah. fast as hell. We know that he's been able to get on. But he's a guy who did get thrown out at third, and yeah. it, it felt like he was kind of pressing a little bit. Maybe yeah. didn't need to go for that base. On the flip side, you get the rookie Wyatt Langford, baseball IQ through the roof. Yeah. He taking off from first base almost makes it all the way home. Yeah. Shout out to Ryan Pepio for getting to home plate yeah. and being aware in that situation. But those are both just like so instinctual. Those guys, and they were both out, but everybody was praising Wyatt for 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 seeing that and trying to get home and steal it, even though he was out. And I think we were a little bit fairly, in my opinion, critical of Jose st- trying to steal third in that situation. When it comes to stealing bases, is our reaction from the outside looking in specifically situational, or do you think that there there is kind of instincts involved? Like, how do you kind of judge a steal if it's good or bad, an attempt, I should say? It depends on the situation. Like, okay. when Jose series tried to steal third base, they were down three zip. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a total, total different situation than why Langford being aggressive. I thought, you know, it was heads up. It took a perfect throw, perfect tag by Pepio, you know, to get him out. But they were up. So it, okay. it, it doesn't hold the same weight, the same magnitude versus, you know, when Siri stole there, it was three zip. You're already in scoring position. It, the, the risk reward. What's the risk reward okay. you get in the third base? Obviously, you get the third base. You know, the, there's a higher percentage of you scoring, you know, pass ball, sack fly. Um, but I think what was it? A couple games, the, the series before that, he stole third, and even the post game, mm-hmm. Kevin Cash was like, "Ah, I really didn't. it worked <laughs> out." But I, you know, like he, he, the guy's giving me about to give me a heart attack. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, it's just it, it's it's situational, really. I mean, if you're going to steal there, I'm fine with the aggressiveness. If you're going to steal there, you better be 99 mm-hmm. percent sure you're going to be safe. If you're Jose Sierra down three to zip with you already in scoring position. I, I've said this on the show before, and again, I didn't play anywhere near the level that you play, but I, I played travel ball and I played you know high-level high school baseball in the city growing up, and I always felt like stealing third was easier than stealing second because stealing third, you're stealing on the pitcher, and I, I feel like you should be able to make it. I was never the you know blazing speed type of dude, but I feel like if you get a good lead, you don't have a guy holding you on at the bag. If you get a good lead, you get a good jump, you're stealing it on the pitcher pretty yeah. much only. It doesn't matter what who's behind the plate, right? Yeah. What do you think in your career and, and, and seeing some of these guys now, was it easier to steal third than to steal second? And what are some of maybe the errors that you see when guys try to steal those bags? Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you as far as it's easier to steal third because, like, everything's in front of you. You mm-hmm. can see the catcher's signs. You can see where he's setting up at. 
Um, you know, pitchers when when guys get in, in scoring position, they tend to focus more on the hitter, and they kind to you know kind of uh, you know forget about the runner at second base. Um, but the magnitude, if you get thrown out at third, yeah. it's a little different than if you get thrown out at second. You know, you're 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 going from non scoring position trying to get to scoring position. That risk reward is 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 worth it more for a base runner. So for me, like I didn't, I, I stole third of course, but I didn't steal it as much, even though that it was easier. I tended, I, t- I, I tended to uh, attempt to steal second base more so. Another guy that Jay and I were talking about uh, earlier in the week, he didn't play yesterday, but Isak Paredes, who had a great year last year, yeah. right? Power hitter, pulls everything. It feels like, yeah. And and one of the things we were wondering, I'll ask you now, is if because of the way he hits the baseball and how much success he had last year being a pull hitter. Does that make it harder, you think, this year? Do, the book is out on him, maybe, for opponents to say, well, we saw this guy, Paredes, last year was really good, but he pulls everything. Does that help opponents, maybe, this year, uh, at least on the front end of the season, in pitching against him? Usually it does. Usually it does. You know, a guy that hits the ball in one location or one area on the field, it's easier f- for the opposing team to pitch to him and even defend him. Um, but in Jose's, not Jose's, in, in Isaac Paredes' case, um, I, I think even though he pulls the ball a lot, just the way that he does pull the ball, it's it's an I don't want to say efficient, but like he does it in such a way that like everything is on the barrel. Like he's hitting mm-hmm. the ball so hard to where even if you do play him to pull side, mm-hmm. you know, it it's the 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 probability of you catching his barrel, barreled balls are are, are not super high. <laughs> okay. Right? Hit, yeah, because he's, he's hitting the ball so hard. Yeah, he's hitting the ball hard and He's, you know, he pitchers are probably going to try to pitch him inside, but you know, we saw last year, like that's kind of like what he wants. Yeah. He's on the plate, <laughs> he's on the plate, and he's like almost daring you to come inside. Like that's that's where he's at his that's his strength. That's where he's at his best, and he's quick inside there. Is it one of those hands, things man. where it's like knowing it isn't the same as stopping it? Is that kind of what you're saying? Like you can know he's trying to pull it, or that's how he hits it, but it doesn't mean you're going to be able to stop him yeah. from doing it per se. Yeah, I mean, if it if it isn't broke, why why yeah. try to change it? You know, it you know the game of baseball, at the big league level, it's a cat and mouse game. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you know the book is on him, and you know I'm sure pitchers are going to try to make an adjustment, and if they begin to have success, then that's going to be on him to you know to to make some alterations. Fair. One of the things that really fascinates me, and this is why I'm a baseball nerd, is, is the guys that don't hit leadoff and middle of the lineup. Like, where do you put guys? Like, who's your two-hole hitter? Who bats seven, eight, nine? It's easy to, t- you know, there's a lot of guys out there that are leadoff hitters. Like, you know they're leadoff hitters. Yeah. Like, what, what do you do? Like, you know where, you know, the big boppers, you're going to hit three, four, five. Yeah. But who's six, seven, eight, nine? To me, I, I think is a, is a huge part of, like, lineup construction is one of the things that I think is talked about very infrequently that, goes a long way on how you're able to sustain innings. How do you put up crooked numbers and instead of just having these rallies that continue to flame out? And one of the things I brought up in the first hour was I would love to see, and I know he's batting, you know, he batted seventh yesterday. I would like to see a guy like Siri bat ninth as a double leadoff. He's got the speed. He strikes out probably a little bit too much and hits too many fly balls to be a guy that's going to hit at the top of the lineup. I don't. You're not going to move Yandi like you just alluded to. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But what do you make of a guy like maybe Jose Siri batting ninth where you still got the pop at the bottom of the lineup and Denard, if he gets on base, he's a stolen base threat. Yeah, yeah, so maybe, yeah. you know, like you said, to the detriment maybe of the team sometimes, <laughs> yeah, but he, yeah, yeah. he's aggressive as he hell. Fast, he's probably yeah. going to finish the year with the most stolen bases on the team. Yeah. He's got maybe more pop than your traditional nine-hole hitter, but I've always fancied the the double leadoff. Do you think that something like that could work? Yeah, I don't mind that. I, I think you're you're definitely on point with that. Um, just from the standpond of, like you said, with Yandi being, you know, the tradi- uh, well, he's he's, he's not he's a non traditional leadoff. And I hitter. think that goes into it as well. Exactly. You so could having, look at Yandi as he's not your traditional leadoff hitter. He's a base clogger a he's little a, bit. He is, but you, with Siri being in front of him, you don't have to worry about exactly. that. Exactly. Maybe when he comes up, Siri's in scoring position, right? Because Ideally, because he, yeah. he has a, he's gotten a single, stole mm-hmm. second, or he's just hit a double in the gap, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, like, I'm fine with that because, honestly, your seven, eight, nine hitters, like, they're pretty much the same person. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're not, like, your seven-hole hitter, you're not looking for them to, you know, to, to put up the same production as your three, four, five hitters. So seven, eight, nine hitters are, you know, you're hoping that they give you, you know, solid two, two solid ABs a game, whether it's a walk, a sack fly, 
You know, you're not you're not looking for them to to drive in a lot of runs and produce a lot of runs. If anything, you want them to try to hopefully, you know, like I said, have a good AB, get up the, the starting pitchers uh, pitch count, and seven, eight, nine, like those those guys, in my opinion, are, are interchangeable. So if you take Jose Siri and put him at the nine spot, I don't think it changes. It, it doesn't change the lineup at all, in my opinion. Denard, let me ask you how how long how many years were you in the minors before you got the six, call six. six. Ooh. So one of the things that Jay and I were chatting I put my time about, in, yeah, bro. you did, I put man. My time in. So like, that's something I feel like has changed a lot, though. You're starting. Like, we just brought up Wyatt Langford, yeah. and they had a bunch of rookies last year. Like yeah. Texas is not afraid to bring some of these guys up a little faster, which is different. Um, I know Baltimore similarly. You're starting to see some call ups happen in a way where guys are s- skipping. I know uh, Paul Skeens with Pittsburgh's probably gonna pitch this year. Yeah, he was pitching for LSU a year ago. Yeah, like that's crazy. Yeah. I wonder, I want to get your opinion on like just how you handle younger batters. And I talk about it because we were specifically talking about Junior Caminero, who I know he's a little banged up right now. He had the quad injury uh, in Durham a few days ago. But that's a guy, and we've seen the Rays, it feels like they even more so than other clubs are of admitting it with some of these youngsters. Like they're afraid to bring them up quicker. They're afraid to leave them up, even if they've already got time like Junior did last year. But just your thoughts on like the latter and, and if there should be – if guys need that time, I think that's what I'm looking for. Do guys need time, or, or are there more guys in today's game that can maybe make the jump a little sooner than we've ever seen in the history of baseball? I, I think, yeah. I, I think you're seeing the, the state of the game. You're going to see more younger players make that jump a lot sooner to the big leagues. And I think it has everything to do with the way the, the, way the system is set up now. You have less minor league teams now than, than ever before. Big league rosters, you go, you look on on average, they're a lot younger mm-hmm. in today's game than they were five years ago, ten years ago. Part of the reason why I had to spend six years in the minor leagues was because there were a lot of veteran managers and a lot of GMs that trusted trusted the veterans more so than the young guy. They would hold that younger guy in the minor league just a little bit longer. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and give them some more seasoning is what mm-hmm. the word I always <laughs> little say. Marinade. I, little yeah, marinade. I'm, like, I'm like, man, I'm 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 well seasoned. <laughs> I got I'm starting to have gray gray hairs in, in AAA here at, at oh, 24, yeah. 25 years old. But I think the game has just changed and you're gonna see that, you know, uh these these college players come up a lot sooner. Um obviously it, it's you know, it's fun, it's exciting. Um, it's good for the game because, like you said, a year ago you saw these guys on the biggest stage at the college level, and within a year or two they're at the they're in the big leagues. And so, I think baseball is is trying to get to where, check this out, NBA and NFL is right okay. to where the fan the fan base, the college fan base, yeah, is now able to track the you know. To the big yeah. we'll track those same players um, from college. It's like a half a decade later. I mean, you mentioned six years. Exactly. Like people that were watching. watching if you're watching a guy school, in college or high school, and you, you have to wait a half a decade, or wait at least four or five years. Yeah. You kind of lose hundred you know, percent track of where they are, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, maybe he did make it, but maybe he did not make it. So um, I, I think it's better for the game to see these young studs make it to the major leagues a lot sooner. And shout out to uh, one of my former players, Trey, Trey Lipscomb. Who uh, was drafted by the Nats in 2022 in the third round out of the University of Tennessee? Uh, made his MLB debut, hit a home run for the Nats uh, yeah, the I, other I day. So shout out to my man T Lips, and uh, you want to talk about a kid that where's he from? Had his head on straight. His parents are military, so they were up in like kind of the Jacksonville area. Um, they lived in Virginia for a while, and then they moved down to Tampa for a couple years. And I had the fortune and opportunity to be able to coach uh, with my buddy Joe Martinez and to have lips on the team. And you could just tell the kid was special. But he was he was an athlete, right? Mm-hmm. He could do a little bit of everything, played shortstop for us. But At Freedom? Now playing third base. No, school? it was a bullet. I don't, he didn't go to high school here. He was only here oh, uh, when yeah, he was like you. 10, 11 years old. I got and you. we were lucky to have him on the, on the team. And, you know, it was funny because you get a kid that was that highly touted at that young age, mm-hmm. and we – didn't just give him shortstop. We made him bat 10th and played right field, and he earned his spot. And the parents didn't bitch. They didn't moan. They knew that it was a process, and he earned it, and he was batting second and playing shortstop about five or six games into the season. And it was just the way that they set him up for success, not just as a baseball player but as a human being. It's no surprise that, you know, he's <laughs> hitting bombs he's tr- in the bigs he's now. He's 23 years old, and he's hitting home runs for the Washington Nationals. Our guy, Denard Span, joining us here in studio. More chatting with him when we come back. 
What does he think about bunting with a no-hitter, the future of Mike Trout, and also other impact players in the major leagues? We'll chat with our buddy D-Span when we return. The boys of summer are doing it on the diamond at Tropicana Field, and we're all over it. Get the latest Rays news, analysis, and more. We're your hardball hookup all season long. This is the home of the Rays. 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE Traffic Update. Typical slow traffic in Tampa on westbound I-4 from the Salmon Connector to the junction with I-275. And there's a Riverview accident on southbound 301 at Simmons Loop that has road blockage. Clearwater, stop and go on the westbound Memorial Causeway heading to Clearwater Beach. From Myrtle Avenue to the roundabout, 20-minute delays. Tarpon Springs crash, Huey Avenue at MLK Drive. With traffic, I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by Train Heating and Cooling Systems. Train Heating and Cooling Systems are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you. They run together. Visit traininfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. Traininfo.com. It's hard to stop a train. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Tuesday, April 2nd. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Tuesday, April 2nd. 813-219-1919. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Ford. The college basketball playoffs have always been one of my favorite times of the sporting year. Why? It's a chance for a small town school to beat a perennial powerhouse. Bartow Ford has been that underdog, outselling big city dealerships every single day, every single year. We only do this by teamwork and taking care of our customers. It's just another way at Bartow Ford we're different and we prove it. Men. Are you suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? The medical providers at Prestige Men's Medical Center offer breakthrough treatments that eliminate problems in the bedroom without pain or surgery. 98% of men see instant results on their first office visit. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Men are even lasting 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. But that's not all. For a limited time only, call Prestige Men's Medical Center now and your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. You'll see instant results right in the office. You'll even get a gift that enhances your performance in the bedroom. All this worth hundreds of dollars is free if you call now. 813-538-7931. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. RiseCon 2024 is back and better than ever. Global entrepreneur and Tampa's very own Vic Tipness brings together the world's most elite event for entrepreneurs to Tampa to help people live their max life. On April 19th through the 21st, join Vic along with MLB All-Star Alex Rodriguez, NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, political analyst Tucker Carlson, and many more. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com. Invest in yourself and watch your life transform. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com today. You do not want to miss this event. We may all be missing football season, but the Buccaneers are still making tackles, tackling hunger in the off season with the Mosaic Company. And this year, they're opening a new school pantry to fight food insecurity in Tampa Bay at Bowling Green Elementary School. But this isn't the first, last, or only. The Bucks and the Mosaic Company have teamed up to tackle hunger in Tampa Bay by opening food pantries in the region for years. To put it in perspective, did you know one in four children in Tampa are food insecure? You can help, too, at Buccaneers.com slash Tackling Hunger. Ah, the sounds of baseball. 
But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audibel Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audibel Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients. Today, Morgan & Morgan has more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors. Visit TrajanWealth.com. Last season on the Choosing Sides F1 podcast, we established unequivocally that F1 is the pinnacle of motorsports. We did, but honestly, I was left with more questions than answers, Tony. I'm Tony Cameron Brown, a tech, culture, and F1 commentator. And I'm Michael Costa, comedian from The Daily Show. Join us for season two of Choosing Sides F1 and get all of the answers. All of them? All of them. Listen to Choosing Sides F1 on the iHeartRadio app. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Stuck in traffic? Signal cutting out? Get online. Download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anajar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Welcome back into Jay and Zach. We go into segment number two, hour number two with our guy, Denard Span. And I know everybody's itching to talk about it. Bunting! Oh, man. Somebody was messing with me before. Oh, bunt talk. Bunt talk. Uh, I get really excited when it comes to bunting. So uh, I don't know how many questions we're going to get here on bunting, but I know it's more than one, Denard. So I'm Where do we want to go? Do we want to talk no-hitter bunting we're or gonna overall start, bunting? We're going to start with the no-hitter. No hitter. Okay. But we're gonna, we got so many bunting questions up our sleeves. So let's start with this. And we saw Houston last night, five games into the season, pitch their first no-hitter. Their first win being a no-hitter, mind you, uh, against the the Blue Jays. So for whatever I feel about the Rays, I'm glad we're not Toronto right now. (laughs) So this Could be worse. Could be worse, absolutely. (laughs) So the conversation out there, and and Jay and I haven't actually even got to talk about this yet today. If there's a no-hitter... Is there an unwritten rule in baseball that you can't bunt to help your team get out of the no-hitter? What are your thoughts on using specifically a bunt to break up a no-hitter in a baseball game? Depends on what the score is. Okay. If it's the okay. eighth inning and it's one to zero mm-hmm. and, it, and the pitcher has a no-hitter, what are you talking about? What are we talking about? Okay. It's a one run. If I find a way to get on base, I'm the, t- the, the game-tying run. So I'm okay with that. Now, whether the pitcher's going to be okay with that, that's another story. <laughs> we'll find out next time you're up. <laughs> exactly. But, like, I, like, how, like, yeah, I'm fine with that. You know, I mean, it, it's just like, once again, depends on what the score is, depends on what the situation is. 10-0 in the ninth. No, no, no. You're not allowed to bunt. No, no. It's a no-go. That's a no-go. You deserve Why? it. Why? What's, what's I'm the I'm definitely difference? bunting Stop. in that scenario, what by the way. <laughs> what do you mean, what's the difference? Okay, so I have to raise my hand and say, I'm very pro-bunt in that scenario. You are? 100%. No. You can't do that. I hate Who's the unwritten rules baseball? thing. Who's played baseball before here? Okay. Who hasn't? I nah, played baseball growing up. You I'm can't not, do that. I'm man. not going to say I played in the bigs, but like I played baseball growing up. I have no qualms about bunting. I, and I say that knowing I'm going to get beamed at some point. Well, if you're okay with that, then hey, man, by all means, go for it. I don't want to be the guy that got no hit. That's harder for me to sleep on than being the guy that got hit the next time I was up because he, I bumped it he out. He also wants to get hit by a golf ball, so. That's very true. <laughs> I would lean into the golf ball. What about leaning into a pitch? Well, it's still a yeah, walk. No, Does somebody that did that. Somebody did, I think, to Scherzer. Does I that think count as breaking up a no-hitter? No, it just messes up the perfect messes game. Messing up the perfect game. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So it's still, but the there's no still people that don't like that either. It yeah. is an Again, unri- it happened to Scherzer years But you, it is an unwritten rule that you don't bunt if it's just to break up the no-hitter. No, you don't do that. It's a no-go. seven, eight, nine inning and the game is out of hand. And more than you know, three, four runs. Now you got to okay. Swing. You got that, that's okay. that's an unwritten rule. You got to swing the bat. What if you just kind of swing it and then you accidentally bunt? <laughs> swung like a half swing. Like a called a swung. Like, like a oops. An oops. Yeah. What if you oops I mean, it? Yeah. If you, you if, didn't if, try. If you're able to play it off good, go for it, man. Like ah, ooh, whoops. He did the Jeter. When Jeter My got bad. Hit. Oh man. Dang. Uh, what else we got on bunts? <laughs> uh, I want you to ask the bunt bunts. questions for once. So uh, you know it's funny because I remember. Kiermaier used to come in, and every year we would ask him about bunting, and he was like, it's not my thing. 
It's not my thing. <laughs> Bro, I asked him on the air. We've asked him on multiple shows at multiple times. Yeah. He flat out has told us it's not his thing. Yeah. He's, he got to Toronto year one. We watched him bunt several times with the Blue Jays. He has bunted more? Yes. I, mean, I know he did last year. I, I don't yeah. know if he's bunted at all. I don't think he has this season, unless he was trying to break up the no-hitter yesterday. <laughs> 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 but, but that like, was good. <laughs> bunting was is, good. is such a weird thing because we've asked multiple people yeah. within at least the Rays, and they're like, it's not an organizational <laughs> thing. I know Kevin Cash it's not taught one way or another, and yeah. he literally tells his players, if you ever want to bunt, it's you can, yeah. but I'm not going to tell you to bunt. I'm not going to tell you not yeah. to bunt. Yeah. So, like, your thoughts on bunting in today's game, and if that's something that you worked on as a hitter, and if you think hitters should work on that in today's game. Yeah, I think definitely the bunt has kind of gone away in today's game. Everybody, you know, wants to slug. Everybody wants to, you know, get a higher exit velocity, launch angle, all of those things. So you've kind of seen the bunt um, in a lot of ways, be eliminated from the game. Um, in my day, in my which wasn't that long ago, even though it feels like it is when I'm watching the game, you know, if you had a certain set of attributes or skills, like you use that to your advantage, mm -hmm. right? But even it, even me knowing that I was a speed guy, there's still like an ego play in it. You okay. know what I mean? Like I, you know, I have the confidence that man, I want to, I want to hit this pitcher. Like yeah. this guy's not better than me, even though I want to, you know, I should be bunting more. Um, so that was always a challenge, even with me, even though I bunted quite a bit, I always look back on my career. I'm like, man, I probably should have bunted a, even, a, even more than what I did. And so even looking at a guy like Kevin Kiermaier, it's like speed is your number one skill and tool. So why not take, take advantage of that? You know, for, you know, I, I used to always have, you know, uh, older hitting coaches that say, you know, if you bunt, if you have th this amount of bunts per year, like it, mm -hmm. it drives your batting average up to a certain extent or whatever. So, um, yeah, I, that's what I got for you on that. You know what's interesting, Jay? We were just at the Vals Bar, and we were talking to Kevin Roy about putting. And remember I mm -hmm. asked him the question, and I said, what professionals, I saw this from. It's uh, exciting. Nobody wants to practice putting. I'm nobody sure. wants to practice yeah. putting. So we yeah. were talking. I heard a quote yeah. from Patrick Harrington, yeah. and he said, my number one piece of advice to amateur golfers is go for the two putt. And he's like, everybody always tries to make the putt. They usually miss it far, and then they miss the second putt, and they three putt all day, all round long. Yeah. And like, if you just go for the two putt, you're going to cut off so many strokes from your score. And I feel like it's probably a similar approach where like you want to make that putt, you want to make the swing in baseball. Yeah. But if you just bunted more, mm -hmm. especially again, if you have the speed and it, it works Correct. in your game, Correct. you'd actually probably be on base more. Correct. So you're talking about looking back. You in the moment you're like no I can hit this but you yeah. you're you probably and I don't mean you specifically but yeah, in yeah. general you could probably pad your stats more if you just bunted more for yeah. some of these hitters same thing with putters and uh, I mean I still go for the the putt every time but I miss it ninety nine percent of the time but I think too if you're let's say you're bunting a lot and you're a left handed batter and you bring the third baseman in and then part of your game is slapping a single by him like I think it. It helps in more ways than one. I think you adjust the defense as well yeah, in a yeah. way where you lose that aspect of it. If you're a guy that likes to hit the ball the other way and you're a left-handed batter, lay down a couple bunts. That third baseman's not going to be playing back. You're cutting down his range. And if you do that, you're going to get more singles that way too. I just I think it's such a weird type of thing that we deal with now. And I, and I want to ask you about sacrifice bunts, which you know I have these arguments with people and they say, you can't give away outs. And I go, the game is not preventing outs. The game is to score runs. runs. And if you have a guy at second base mm -hmm. and you can bunt him over to third and then you can score a run without the benefit of the out in a lot of games, because the majority of games in baseball are what? One, one run games. Yeah, one, two run games. I, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. It's it's a weird yeah. type of thing that it's such an antiquated way of thinking, but we've yeah. become such a weird baseball society where we're focused more on preventing outs rather than producing runs. And that's the name of the game. Yeah, I've struggled. I struggled even towards the end of my career with, you know, like what you said as far as managers and, and teams not executing and wanting that that sacrifice bun in those situations. Like I understand on the flip side why they did why, you know, sacrifice bunts aren't um sexy mm -hmm. or why they're not wanted because they're you know, they're looking at it like this hitter could hit a double or he could hit a home run here and we could have two runs instead of uh, instead of one run. And so, you know, it's just, you know, one of those things where, um, you know, it's just the way the game is played now. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing there's, there's nothing more you can really, really say other than that. Like, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, but, you know, I, I've, I've 
I got in trouble quite a bit for sac- sac- sacrifice bunting in, in, in my career. And, and so it's just, you know, I would scratch my head a lot and I'd be like, well, I guess this is the way it's, the game is played. And I'll go up the next at bat and try to swing. And I would pop up, you know, with, mm-hmm. with the guy on second base. And you'd be like, man, this guy, you know, I could have gotten the guy mm-hmm. over to third base or over from first to second base. So I, I look at it too, like this of as a pitcher, a lot of times now guys are, you know, you're, you're pitching. That's it. How often are you fielding months? How often do those guys do PFPs? And if you're a bigger guy on the mound and you have to come off the mound and field a bunt and throw the ball to first base, you don't even practice that. So if you're telling me that a guy with some speed lays down a sacrifice bunt, bad things can happen. That guy picks up the ball. He launches it into right field. It's run, rabbit, run. And here's the other thing. When you're a guy that lays down a sacrifice bunt, when you run back to the dugout, what is every guy in your dugout doing? They're coming up to that front step. They're giving you daps, right? Correct. They're saying, wow, you sacrificed. The key word is sacrifice yourself for the team. I feel like things like that are just so underappreciated because they're not quantifiable, right? You you don't look at that. But, you know, talk about that as far as guys doing selfless things on the baseball field and what that how that permeates through the dugout. Yeah, I, you know. That that's one of my favorite things, you know. When I have I've had selfless teammates and, and guys that go up there and you know do the things that you don't see in the stat sheet. You know that's why I tried to pride my my game on and and one of the reasons why you know I've always been an under the radar type player. You know if you played with me, you would appreciate mm-hmm. you know what I brought to the table as a player because I did those little things. But you know those are the things that don't get the glory, right? But those are the things that every ball club needs in order to be successful. You have to have guys that are going to do the dirty work and going to do the things that, you know, once again, are not, you know, glamorous. And so, um, you know, th- those are things that, you know, lift up a ball club. And those are things that, you know, you you have to have a handful of players um, that are able to to do those things, do the little things, you know, getting the, getting the, the bunt down, you know, hitting behind the runner, going mm-hmm. first to third on the bases, knowing when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive. And, you know, uh, knowing when or, or where to throw the ball when you're on defense. You know, those are the little things, keeping that double play in order. Those yeah. are the little things that, you know, win championships. We saw that last night, too, in one of the games. There was a deep fly ball to the center field, runner on first and second. And instead of trying to throw that guy to third, we had a little chance. You, you throw, throw the ball to second base. Throw the ball to second mm-hmm. base to keep the double play in order. You got to swallow your pride. That's mm-hmm. why I say about the risk-reward, even still, yeah. third, still in third base at times. It's like, man, I can get this guy, but even if I can get him, what, what the one percent chance if I'm out? Like, was it worth it? it <laughs> yeah. It's not worth it. So like, let's just stay here, swallow my pride, and and let's help just go. Team. I mean, yeah, let's help the team, and and I'm already in scoring position. A guy that I think can stop helping his team, and I'm going to ask you switching <laughs> gears completely, is one Mike Trout with the Angels. Uh, oh, poor guy. So let's just pretend you're on a couch with Mike Trout. I call him Mike. We're on a first name basis. Okay, I got you. MT. <laughs> call, <laughs> MT. MT. And there's no mics, and you're just hanging out, and, and, and Mike. Mr. Trout looks at you, Denard, and he's like, "Man, I don't know what to do. I'm with the Angels. Otani's gone. We're we're not a good overall ball club. What advice are you giving Mike Trout about how he should handle the rest of his baseball career right now?" I mean, just go out there and do what you've always done. I mean, un- unfortunately, you made the decision to sign up, you know, with the Angels, and um, unfortunately, they haven't been able to put a, a, a solid ball club around you and. I would just tell him, hey, just go about your business. You know, the, the, the crazy things have happened in this game. And, you know, maybe, you know, you, you're, the, the guys that are on your ball club, things start, you know, start to click and, you know, you, the, the team begins to, to play good baseball. Or, you know, you just never know what might happen as far as, you know, a trade or, or an opportunity coming um, along the way. But just continue to attack the game the way you've always attacked it. You're on the on the route to being one of the best players to ever play this this game of baseball. Yeah, it's uh I'd be very surprised if he finished his career with the Angels. I think eventually a kid from uh Jersey like that, uh being a, a Philly fan growing up in the but Phillies for a long time. They, they, they'll let him go. They'll yeah. let him go at some point, but yeah. it's, it's it's gonna be on their timing and mm-hmm. when they look at it and, 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 and see that, you know, it's it's his best years are Behind, he'll still yeah. have a, some good years in front of him, but majority of his best years are going to be behind him. And then it's you'll tough. see Trout and Harper together in the outfield. Well, not in the outfield; it's Harper's playing first. But yeah. you'll see Trout and Harper back to back in that lineup before it's all said. Yeah, first base. Yep. Yeah.
Coming up next, we got the span cycle. Yeah. Four questions as we round the bases with Denard. But before we get to that, your bracket might be busted. Don't let your housing needs suffer the same fate. March into success with my guy, John Howard at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Right now, homeowner debt is madness. Credit card rates are through the roof. Everyone does love a good Cinderella story, though. So create yours by saving with Howard Team Home Loans and see what options work best for you. John and his team can coach you on your individual needs. It's time to break away from high rates, get off the bench, experience the dunk of a deal with home loans by starting at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. John Howard, the top seed in VA loans, too. In fact, John Howard just closed a deal for a young couple on their first home. The husband, a DAE listener, a military member getting ready to enter civilian life. John saved him a ton of time, saved him even more money by using the benefits earned through enlistment that many lenders are flat out too lazy to do the work on. John Howard always going above and beyond for his clients, and hey, he's helping out Jay Retcher right now get into a home. Fun fact, he also helped a different WDAE listener switch roofing companies, saved him thousands of dollars a year by doing that. John Howard, more than one person in Tampa Bay, he's a full network, and he's here to help. Score a slam dunk on your next home loan with my guy, John Howard, at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. We are the home of the best Bolts coverage. 95.3 WDAE and AM620. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. Women's college basketball has historically played second fiddle to the men's game, but in large part due to the greatness of Caitlin Clark and last year's LSU team, the women's game has reached a new stratosphere. And after a dream NCAA tournament last year, the sport looks set to continue to build off that momentum. Tonight, we're gifted with two matchups that everybody wanted. The four biggest names in the sport, back-to-back matchups. Clark and Iowa seek revenge, at least a little bit, from last year's championship loss to Angel Reese and LSU. UConn star Paige Beckers leading the Huskies into a battle against USC freshman Juju Watkins. To make things better for the NCAA, the star-studded slate of games will take place on the day when the men are off, eliminating any possible competition, allowing these stars the opportunity to have the stage to themselves. So sit back and enjoy the hoops tonight, because if we've learned anything from watching these four women this season, it's going to be a great night for college basketball. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. The less your business spends, the more margin you keep. But everything else costs more. Smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system that brings accounting, financial management, inventory, HR onto one platform. It reduces IT costs, and over 37,000 companies have already made the move. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering one-of-a-kind flexible financial programs. Head to netsuite.com slash Patrick. You know our trusted partner, TireRack.com, for their fast, free shipping, free road hazard protection, convenient installation options, and their great selection of the best tires, like the highly consumer-rated General Grabber ATX. But did you know they sell other automotive products, wheels, brakes, and suspension, just to name a few? Everything you need to elevate your drive. You can go to TireRack.com slash Dan. That's TireRack.com slash Dan. TireRack.com, the way tire... Did you know the most successful teams always have a game plan and they stick to it? So it makes sense, of course, to have a successful retirement. You've got to stick to it. You've got to prepare. And it's got to be a written strategy. Hi, this is Steve Holland. Call us here at the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors for your written retirement plan. 727-228-6449. That's 727-228-6449. Having health insurance is important. So, if you or anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check your mail for a renewal form from your state. Complete the form and mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose Medicaid or CHIP, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Keep your family covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today to stay updated on all the action. Bet Online. The game starts here. 
Get ready for our iHeartRadio album release party with the Black Keys. Don't miss the iHeartRadio album release party with us, the Black Keys. On the night of the release of the band's new album, Ohio Players. the iHeartRadio Theater in Los Angeles. We'll be performing and talking all about our new album. Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. Listen on the free iHeartRadio app's alt radio station. Get your most accurate home value estimate at DuncanDuo.com. For more information about contests on this station, go to 953WDAE.com slash rules. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, the home for Team Tampa Bay over, over 20, 20 years, years and counting. counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Welcome back. Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Our guy, Denard Span. Are you guys ready for the Span Cycle? The Span Cycle. Is that official? It's official. Why do you want to Span wanna, Cycle? The Span Cycle? Yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get it checked. We'll have our people call your people. We'll see if we get it greenlit. We'll take it home. We'll, we'll talk out after, after <laughs> the show. <laughs> we didn't get it officially signed off, to be no, fair. It's, we it's had like still five of them last week, and somehow we ended up Spanning the on globe. That. Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. It's usually somebody random that'll text you, like, try this. Like, oh, that's, yeah. the, mm-hmm. that's the winner. Okay. Four uh, semi-rapid fire questions uh, from Zach and I, and uh, we'll see how you answer them. So, uh, Zach, take it away. All right, this is—I uh, was really happy about this one. Bubble gum or seeds on the baseball field? Ooh, I like, can I say both? No, I can't no, say no, both? no, no. You you have to pick one. You can't bunt and hit a home run. Well, you have to pick well, one or the other. When I'm on offense, okay. I like bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> ah, when touche. I'm on defense, I like I like seeds. I touche. like that. That was smart. <laughs> who would, your way around. Who okay. would you rather face? A hard thrower or a soft tosser? Oh man, that's a tough one too. Oh man, because I'm thinking hard thrower, then yeah, I can gear up for a fastball. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not doing this rapid fire. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just pro- semi rapid fire. I'm, 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 I'm processing this, right? Yes, because fair. Hard throwers, obviously, I can you know I, I can gear up for that. I know what they have, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but then when I think of a soft thrower, I think of like a like a a nagging gnat, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody who changes speeds, they locate, they command. Um, but no, I, I would still rather face a, a softer thrower for sure. I'm sorry. The perf- we were just talking about aces, right? You're right. We were, you're we were right. just talking about Tyler Glass now mm-hmm. and and Shane McClant, Shane McClanahan. Yeah, no thanks. I don't want to face those guys. Nah, hell no. I rather face. Some some other guy. Come on, J- Jamie Moore. Come on down. There we go. You're there 40, go. 49 years old. Yeah. That thing. Throwing 85, 91. <laughs> yeah, I really face those guys. Winning 14 games yeah. a year, too, like a maniac. <laughs> How'd that happen? The perfect Denard Span pizza and do not put pineapple on it. No, I do no, not put no. pineapple on it. Pepperoni. Okay. Bacon. Yeah, okay. You can't go wrong with bacon, right? Right. Okay. I'm, it, it, this is boring. Pepperoni, bacon, and, and onions. I like it. We That's got uh, like hand toss, thin crust. Definitely not, definitely not hand tossed. I can tell you that. Okay. Uh, thin crust. Okay. Yeah. And then the bucket list place that you haven't been to yet. I haven't been a lot of places. I'm gonna be honest with you. I told you just Once. a little bit ago. I just went to Europe for yeah. the first time. I went to London and, and we enjoyed ourselves and uh, just expanded my mind on mm-hmm. like man, like there's so much more to offer than just even the states. Even though you know there's a lot of great places here, but um, yeah, I, I still want to go to Paris. Um, Rome, Italy, you know, just a lot of places in Europe that I would love to explore. All right, so I give you one ticket right now. Where are you going? Oh, man, I want to say Paris. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's insane. Yeah. Have you been there? Yes, I have. I know yeah. I'm going to get crap for it. That's why I didn't bring it up because Nick and Sarasota is going to be like, oh, here's Zach bringing up his travels. I did a couple <laughs> summers ago. It was my first time in Europe as well. Yeah. And we went from London. We took the train to Paris. Okay. Spent a day in Paris. Yeah. Phenomenal. Had a great experience. Uh, the, food. the food. The food was great. The, food was great. the wine was better. And just see the Eiffel Tower in person. Was it something just... Mm-hmm. It didn't feel real, man. Wow. It felt like you read about it, you see the movies, you yeah. see it in shows. And to, to like... Surreal. You know, it, it, it still hasn't like hit me that we were literally there. Like we went to the top. Was um, it the scale of it or like what? Yeah. I, it's just the reality that it exists. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel real. It feels yeah. like something you read about or see in movies. Like a myth. Like a myth. Yeah. 100%. I would imagine, I haven't been to Egypt, but I imagine the pyramids are like that. Yeah. Um, 
I didn't get that vibe with Big Ben, although that was cool mm-hmm. to see in London, like the giant clock tower. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I didn't get. Yeah, but it was. It was. It just didn't feel real, and I'm like, I'm actually touching it. it like you said, it makes it opens your mind to be like, holy crap, there's so much more. Most definitely. I had dinner on the Eiffel Tower on Valentine's Day. Yeah, so. Johnny Topper story. All here. the way up. <laughs> yeah, and then the relationship went downhill after that, buddy. So yeah, was good don't ever set them on that high. <laughs> You've been married a while. You're good. Now it feels trust like me. a good time to hit a break. Yeah, uh, dude, trust me. If you're going to do something, go big. That's what I do. Go big or go home. <laughs> Denard, appreciate your time, my man. And uh, when's your first game for either Razor or Twins? April 19th. Razor, Ray, okay. Rays versus the New York Yankees. Oh. That's going to be a big one. Ooh. You're going to be exciting. We got to get him out to June 11th. 11th, right? What is that? First pitch. First against the Cubs. <laughs> you One J Retro. J Retro throwing out the Jay first Retcher pitch. I, the first so I've pitch. thrown. Mine was He's gas. It. it was beautiful. It was gas. Was it a strike? It was a strike. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. A Probably the best ago. pitch of all the DAE talent so far. So I don't want to okay. go again because I, I don't want to screw no, it up. Like you said, you set the, you set the bar really high. So uh-huh. you're good. You don't you have nothing else to prove. He set now the I'm bar. support. I'm a support. So how do you feel about his performance? Are you putting pressure on yourself? No, I don't. I don't know what pressure is. You think you want to top his his, his He's going a different route. I'm going a different route. You gonna throw a let's throw a curveball or slide? Nah. What are you gonna do? Throw left handed? What are you nope. gonna do? I'm going full Hideo Nomo. You won't do it. He's been talking I, about it for years. Are, who is I showing? You have uh, to. He's been talking about it for years. Tonight. Really? He has to go I that sh- route. Oh, I was showing Doug Wechter. He won't do it. I, bro, I had the video. I've been stretch. I got two Pilates classes scheduled so I can stretch. <laughs> I got my hands all the way over. You I'm better, showing my ass, my back pocket to turn. You better turn. mix in a hot yoga session. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, my labrum is tearing as I throw the ball. I already locked in Brady North to catch it because okay. I'm not playing that Raymond stuff, throwing from the side of the mound. Yeah. I'm throwing from on top of the mound. Okay. Full Nomo, bright yellow or bright pink shoes on. I'm either going to be Sports Center top ten or Sports Center not, not top, top ten. 10. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to get multiple replays on Bally against inter- the Cubs. You know, against the Cubs too. I like it. So uh, if they're getting frisky and if they need somebody, I told Cash man. I need to, to I need go. to put a I need to put a, uh, a calendar a calendar uh, reminder. Yep. Yes, to tune in on yes, that. Yes, sir. One. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to invite oh, you. It'll be all over social either. Let it go. Better it's, or worse, it'll be over. <laughs> for better or worse. I don't know if he has the guts to do to do. <sighs> I've actually we're going to oh, find out. I've actually got the uh, <clears throat> I just got a text from the greatest catcher who's this in Tampa Bay Rays history my guy Toby, Toby Hall, Hall. Toby he's, Hall. <laughs> he's laughing Toby I actually did the Nomo uh Saladino tournament Brandon High School Riverview and King okay. how many years ago and coach McAloo <laughs> we gotta freshen up bro. about six seven years ago so Get I gotta make Pilates sure classes I'm in. doing it man full oh, board so you did it at the Saladino Nomo style yeah Okay. And I'm going to go f- even more Nomo this time. Like, I'm oh. talking hands all the way in, shoulder turn and everything. I'm full support. I support whatever. Yeah, I'm ready. I, I mean, I hope it goes well. I, I, I really do. <laughs> there's part of me that, you like, don't there's, I, I, I just hope it goes there's well. No, That's all. There's no pressure because if it doesn't go well, I think it's it adds to it. Yeah, definitely no pressure. I'll, no I'll be sharing it either Listen, way. you see what I wear. You see the shoes that I wear. There's no such thing as shame when it comes and to And you me. have to go full, right? Care. Like, if you're going to do it, you... It, there's no half-assing. Nah, man. you got If you're gonna do it, you gotta go. You have to be all in. Yeah, I'm, that's the only advice I can give you, Jay. I don't want to <laughs> see you half step. I don't want to see that. I think that. I think as you're saying that statement, you already know that I am not a half step no. son of a gun. You know no, me. I, know I go you. full bore, and I don't. Oh, I'm pumped. I, it was either that or going full Chad Bradford style. Ooh, I was going all hurts. the way. I'm talking knuckle I'm scraping pain. on the ground. Dan Quisenberry. I'm My going elbow. Chad Qualls. But that this summer, baby, last throw. no more. That might be your, that might be, yeah. Yeah, that might be your last. That's throw a true fact. We'll ice you up. The good thing is that Coco Eaton will probably be at the game himself, so he can come <laughs> check <laughs> me out. Take you to the operator. Right right just there. take me in the back, <laughs> Denard. We appreciate it. We'll talk Your to you next Denard. week. Yes, sir. Appreciate right. you guys. When we come back, I'll look back at what happened with the Lightning last night, including one guy that is pivotal to their postseason success. We've also got the mixtape, and we look ahead to the Rays game tonight. Don't go anywhere. It's Jay and Zach, ninety-five three WDAE and AM six twenty. Ready for a visual feast of sports talk? WDAE's Drive with T-Crass, Pat and Aaron, and Jay and Zach are now streaming live on YouTube. Search WDAE, smash that like button, and subscribe for your front row pass to all the action. WDAE on YouTube. Like and subscribe. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE. Traffic update. 
Bridge construction in Riverview on southbound 75 before Gibsonton Drive. Two right lanes blocked and we've got stop and go traffic from US 301 in Brandon. 20 minute delays. Tampa crash on eastbound Adamo Drive at US 301 has the left turn lane blocked. Dover crash reported at McIntosh and Newsom Road. Coronet Road northbound near State Road 60. Police activity there. And in Clearwater, stop and go on the westbound Memorial Causeway heading to the beach. 20 minute delays. With traffic, I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by Train Heating and Cooling Systems. Train Heating and Cooling Systems are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you. They run together. Visit traininfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. Traininfo.com. It's hard to stop a train. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Tuesday, April 2nd. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Tuesday, April 2nd. 813-219-1919. Opening up your home to showings, that means strangers, they can open anything. You don't have to worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson, and say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Take it from one of their clients, Chris, who said Mark Spain Real Estate's guaranteed offer that allowed us to sell our 16-year-old home without having to spend thousands on repairs. The guaranteed offer was more than we were hoping for, and the whole process was fast. And that's what you're going to get with over 11,000 five-star reviews. Mark Spain Real Estate, they're the most trusted and experienced real estate team in the U.S. Go to MarkSpain.com and find out what your guaranteed offer will be today. No obligation. MarkSpain.com. Get the guaranteed offer on your home and start packing. At Advent Health, we know the heart. We've mapped it, modeled it, repaired it, and rehabbed it. We've screened it, strengthened it, and saved it. We know your heart, and we know there's an unstoppable human spirit at the center of it. Learn more about whole person care and find nationally recognized heart care specialists at AdventHealthCardiovascularInstitute.com. Sneezing, coughing, uh, stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navaj gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navaj. N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief, and I tell them Navage immediately. This thing is amazing. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Floyd. The college basketball playoffs have always been one of my favorite times of the sporting year. Why? It's a chance for a small-town school to beat a perennial powerhouse. Bartow Ford has been that underdog, outselling big city dealerships every single day, every single year. We only do this by teamwork and taking care of our customers. It's just another way at Bartow Ford we're different, and we prove it. 
Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. Guys, the summer is right around the corner. Get ready to dive into it with my guys over at Pool Perfection. Tampa Bay's premier luxury pool builder. They will get your pool up and running. They can build it in weeks, not months. Go online. There are plenty of five-star Google reviews, thousands of happy customers. Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder is Pool Perfection. So call them now. You get a free estimate and a 3D design of what your new pool will look like. Call them. 727-518-7665. That's 727-518-POOL. Rise Con 2024 is back and better than ever. Global entrepreneur and Tampa's very own Vic Tipness brings together the world's most elite event for entrepreneurs to Tampa to help people live their max life. On April 19th through the 21st, join Vic along with MLB All-Star Alex Rodriguez, NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, political analyst Tucker Carlson, and many more. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com. Invest in yourself and watch your life transform. Get your tickets at theriseconference.com today. You do not want to miss this event. Hi, this is David Savona, executive editor of Cigar Aficionado Magazine, and I want to personally invite you to Big Smoke Meets Whiskey Fest on Saturday, April 6th at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tampa to enjoy exceptional cigars and great whiskeys of the world. Get tickets online at BigSmokeWhiskeyFest.com and use the code IHEARTCIGARS to receive 20% off all tickets. Most impact windows from Reese are installed in just six weeks. Check them out, ReeseWindows.com. Running to a meeting or just need to get away? No problem. Download the free iHeartRadio app where you can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free, free. never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. Bye-bye. The home for every pitch of the 2024 Tampa Bay Rays. We are 95.3 FM, W237CW, Pendellas Park, and the mighty 620 WDAE St. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, Rays Rays fans, free has never sounded so good. Welcome back. Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDA and AM 620. That was a great hour. Yeah, man. It was a lot of fun. He's fun, man. Love having it. And John Howard just stopped by. It's like the genie appeared. You heard me doing his read. He popped in. Me, him, Denar. We had a whole crew in here, man. That was fun. That was a, that was a good time. And look, hopefully the Rays can kind of start to have some fun themselves and win a game tonight. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, at 2.30, but uh, let's look back at what happened with the Lightning last night against the Detroit Red Wings. And, and Zach, like, I like how they played for the most part. Listen, they made some mistakes, but when you look at the game and you're talking about a team with the Bolts, points at nine straight, they were 9-1-1 one, and one in March, and they're playing against a team that's desperate. Detroit loses that game last night. It's highly likely that... They're done. Kaput. It's going to be very difficult for them to be able to crawl back and to make the playoffs uh, as that second wild card. But, hey, good on them. I mean, it's going to happen. But for the Bolts, I look at them going forward, and they know they're going to have to pick it up going against a tough team in Toronto tomorrow night. I I like how they've been playing. I told you this morning when we were working on the show, for some reason, I don't feel even close to as bad about the Lightning loss as I do the Rays loss. Like, I don't think it's even comparable. I was watching the the Lightning game, and, and again, I felt like in that third period, Jay, they had every opportunity to win it. They were playing the right way. They were swarming. Credit to the Red Wings for weathering a long-ass storm of offense. You had Cooch taking shots. You had, I mean, it was. it felt like the Bolts are going to win that game. And then, you know, split second later, they're they're coming down the ice in the final few minutes. Detroit steals a goal. The empty netters, whatever. I don't really, you know, it is what it is. I don't care about that. But it's just, it was a game that came down to the wire. And credit the Red Wings for holding their own and then finding a way to to get that last goal. Um, 
but you saw another Tony shorthanded goal, 19 on the season, career high for him and Sorelli. So uh, a good point there. Lilleberg's been stepping his game up. Uh, Chafee didn't get hurt, drew that penalty. It was kind of a, I didn't think it was a dirty hit, just got kind of boarded there late for that yeah, power play. I'm a little surprised that was a penalty. He I am just, too. He was just, he got hit hard and he kind of like, the hit was, was hard. It was. I just, it didn't well, seem like it was call. egregious. You try to get him on the side there. I don't know. It is. It worked out for the Lightning, but it was just. I wouldn't have been happy with that call if it would have went against the Bolts because that's just a. I thought it was a clean hit. I would agree with that. Um, that being said, so like there were a lot of things that I pulled from that game. And listen, we talked about it before the, they even dropped the puck yesterday. This team has done so much winning in the last three weeks. Like they're not going to win every game. So I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they'll catch Toronto. Probably not. The fact that they do still have two games, the Maple Leafs, it ended up being closer, but they beat the crap out yeah, of the Panthers did. last night. Um, I was watching a little pregame on that because I put some cheddar on it. There you go. And you heard the the Florida the some of the Florida players pregame were like, "Oh, we're gonna have fun! Like we're looking forward to this." And then it was like five one, like immediately. Um, but Toronto gets a couple points. The Lightning don't. Two games against the Maple Leafs left, including the next one for Tampa Bay. They win that game. I think you can at least hope there's some belief, there's some maybe, there's mm-hmm. potential. Yeah, you give yourself a chance. There's still some games to go, but regardless of if they catch Toronto or not, and even with the loss last night, I feel as good about the Lightning today as I did 24 hours ago, to be honest with you. Yeah, we're at a point with the Lightning where even in a loss, there's a lot of good to come from it. And you mentioned Anthony Sorelli, and, and I was very vocal early on this year that he was a guy that needed to step up. That's a nice way to put it. And uh, <laughs> listen, it wasn't personal. I, I, I'm not saying it was. No, I mean. There's some passion there, though. You're, it was. You're it call, was. You're calling him out a little bit. I, him and Sergachev. Mm-hmm. And uh, listen, these are two guys. And, and Chernak, right? Those are the three guys that got paid. They really did. I mean, this is the trio of players that Julian Brisewa said are going to be the cornerstones of this team moving forward, and they're going to be rewarded with long-term contracts. Now, Sergachev, I'm not even going to say anything about him. He's just an absolutely awful injury, uh, and I, I'm sure he's going to be able to bounce back. Chernak, since he's back, been back in the lineup, I think he's played pretty darn well. I like the partnership with Matt Dumba. But Anthony Sorelli has shown you why it is important for him to step up offensively. You alluded to it, 19 goals. He tied a career high. You're talking about a guy, not just there, best shooting percentage in his career, 15.8. His most time on ice, 18 minutes and 34 seconds per game. In his last 13 games, seven goals, three assists. He's a plus eight. This guy is vital to the success of the Tampa Bay Lightning. We know how good he is defensively. But, man, when he's chipping in offensively, Zach, these guys are damn near unbeatable. He is the linchpin. He is the guy that ties everything together. And when he's scoring, watch out for the Bolts. I, that's not a team that I want to play. And I want to shout out Emil Lilleberg. Eight games before being sent down, zero points. He was a minus nine. Nine shots on goal, 16 minutes of ice time. Six games after the call-up, he's like a different guy. Mm-hmm. Two assists, he's a plus one, seven shots on goal, 16 and a half minutes of ice time. He only played about 15:45 last night, but listen to the last two games before that. He played over 20 minutes against the Islanders. He played over 18 minutes against the Boston Bruins, one of the biggest rivals for the Tampa Bay Lightning. That guy is starting to show that he has got the skills to stay here. It's exciting because you have Chafee, you have Lilleberg, you have the young guys stepping up. You have some of those guys that we've been counting on. Hey, if the Lightning want to achieve what they're going to achieve and go deep into the postseason, Sorelli's got to step up. Chernak's got to step up. And, Zach, that's what we're seeing. That's a big reason why they were able to play as well as they have in the last 10 games. Yeah, and, and again, this is reaction to a loss last night. Obviously, a week from now, if they've got a couple more of those and things are kind of going south, we'll have a different reaction. But for me, despite it being an L on the record, I feel fine because the young guys are playing well. The additions are still working out great. And the stars are being the stars. Stamkos from the office last night puts one in. We know Kucherov's having the MVP caliber year. He's having Pointer with the 40. And Vassy, as we've talked about, and you mentioned seeing it in person, he's got that look. Yep. And I thought he did again last night. Yeah, he's locked in. I, I, I can't blame him for any of those goals. I mean, it's just Kane with a tough backhander and a couple mm-hmm. of rebounds where – the Lightning defense were just a step slow. It's just going to happen. Games like that are going to happen, but I feel real good about the Bolts going forward, and you should too. All right, it's 210 on a Tuesday. You know what that means. It's time for JNZ's Mixtape. This is JNZ's Mixtape.
So we're going to have to change that to Jane Zach's mixtape. I was just mix tape thinking now. that. I was just thinking about that. I wrote Jane Z's mixtape, but all right, Jane Zach's mixtape. Eh, could, th- could that be the one thing we carry over? Jane Z's mixtape. I don't, I don't mind having a little bit of both. A little I mean, legacy. You know. Again, it's just it's an extension. We didn't change the name; we extended it. So yeah, we're much cooler. J and Z mixtape, I think, still has a good vibe to I it. I think so too. I don't want, look again. Because in I, my mind, I was like, oh, it should be J and Zach's mixtape, but I think J and Z's yeah, mixtape sounds good. We're fine. Um, spin it, Dugas. What you yeah, got? Yeah, spin on it on the tracks, Dookie. Track one. Will Caleb Williams be embraced by Chicago despite what you might call his personality quirks? I say yes. Now, how long does that last? Does it last at all? Those are separate conversations, and that'll directly be based on him winning or losing. We love the personality stuff because it's the offseason, Jay. You score four touchdowns and win the opening game of the season. Hello, Chi-Town. They're going to eat you up, and they're going to love you. That's the difference, win or lose. People love all of the minutia. They love all the different things if you're a winner. I remember when Milwaukee drafted Giannis into the Colombo. Everybody's like, I'm not learning that name. I don't care. We're just going to call him the Greek Feek. I don't care. And then he won a championship and won a couple of MVPs. Everybody's like, I will learn how to say it. I will learn how to spell it. Uh, we'll, I'll we'll, learn Greek. We'll, we'll be okay with his brother being on the team, even though he doesn't do anything. We'll we'll learn Greek. We'll eat Greek. Watch Sign Big Fat Greek up. Wedding five times. Exactly, we'll all, we'll man. Get we'll get him to the Greek. We'll get, get him to, to the, the Greek. Greek. Great movie. Uh, Greek salads for wall. everybody. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great movie, man. One of the more underrated movies. Agreed. Uh, it's good to feel something. One of the best lines in any movie <laughs> at all. But yeah, I love it. And I know a lot of this conversation has come up recently because Chicago embraced somebody like Dennis Rodman. I mean, yeah, but they won. They were arguably the greatest team ever assembled there uh, in the late 90s. This guy was doing book signings and wearing wedding dresses. So if they can... Except that Caleb Williams painting his nails and having some personality quirks. If he goes out there and balls the hell out with this Bears team, they're going to look at him like the savior, not as a guy that they're going to uh, bash and uh, worry about his personality quirks. Track two. Would you want LSU women's basketball coach Kim Mulkey to coach your daughter? Hell yes. Success. It's all about success. Everybody wants to cut her down and say all these different things. And this report that came out that didn't even seem to be that bad. Right? It was she tried to get out in front of it like her name was going to be dragged through the mud, that it was going to be some fireable offenses. And yeah, I mean, yeah. Is she the greatest human being in the world? I mean, I don't know. I don't know her personally, but you're talking about a you're talking about one of the most successful women's college basketball coaches of all time. And you're talking about her putting girls into the WNBA and achieving their dreams of playing professionally. I got no problems with Kim Mulkey. She can go do her thing. She may not be everybody's cup of tea, but if you're asking me if my kid can go play there, I got no issue with that. Yeah, I I don't know anything about her personally that, or enough, I should say. All I know is professionally, she's one of the best in her industry. And she's got studs and stars coming there. So, yeah, I mean, to me, similar to Caleb Williams, different but similar success. You're talking about, do you want this person to be, you know, a part of your life? Well, yeah, they're successful. So from a sports standpoint, why wouldn't I? That's right. Track three. three. All right, we're going to be a little open with this one here. If, Thanks. If there was a steroid that could make you better at your job... And it had the same benefits and drawbacks, uh, drawbacks rather, of any PEDs or anything you see in the world of sports, consequences included. Ooh. Would you take it? When the world slips you a Jeffrey. Uh, I, so here's my thing. Let me hear what you got to say about this. So we're saying this in a similar way that we look at it in baseball, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, and I've always said, and I feel like it's obvious, but we argue anyways, and I say we as a baseball community, not you and I per se, a lot, if not everybody was doing steroids. It wasn't like the people that were doing it were the unicorns, the the exceptions. Like the exceptions were the handful of people that weren't using steroids or weren't using performance enhancing drugs. And listen, if it's not roids, it's something else. There's always things that are being used and so for me, yeah, if everybody's using it and everybody's getting better, I have no qualms about it. I don't I think we've we've made it such an irrational thing and steroids became such a thing. Baseball was aware of steroids before the whole thing broke and was fine with it. You know why? Because they got the summer of Sosa and Maguire. Mm-hmm. So for me, I've been so adamant about lessening the 
stuff we say about the steroid era, like as a baseball fan in it, I enjoyed that like a ton as a younger person. I watched the hell out of the home runs that were being hit by these guys. Now, there's a lot of bad effects that come into play and with their health and I think that's certainly worthy of bringing up, but I hate how much we kind of say like, oh, there was just a bad crop of guys. The majority of ball players were using roids and the majority of ball players before that were using something else kind of like it. And the majority, everybody's always using something. So for me, the way I treat steroids in baseball to have that opinion, I would have to say yes in this scenario. Yeah, it's funny as much as I would want to take this, you know, moral high ground of like, I wouldn't do that or I don't need that type of thing. It's it's easier said than done. It's easier said like, oh, you know, you're looking at everybody in the competitive advantage and it obviously will be a little bit different here, right? Are we are we playing a game necessarily? No, it's a little bit different for us. Like what kind of advantage would we get? Right? Would we be smarter? Well, like let's, how would we play that out? Let's say that, you know, it made it to where your takes are always, you know, way more spot on that you get bigger and better opportunities, not only for career growth, but, you know, guess everything that you do is just amplified and made better. But the consequences mean that if you get caught, you're out of this business, your name gets dragged through the mud, you're I mean, your sole, well, at least for now, your sole source of income is kaput. Like, I mean, you you just fall off the cliff. I'm going to do something crazy here, Jay. I'm going to turn around on Dugas. Would you do it, Dugas? I think I would. Yeah. I mean, you look at a guy like uh, A-Rod, right? Uh-huh. He still works for Fox. He still owns the still Timberwolves. Rich as hell. Like, he's still rich as hell. He's on Shark Tank. Mm-hmm. Like, when you talk about, like, these guys, like, they're, oh, man, their lives are over. No, their career may not be looked the same, but... You still get an opportunity to go out there and make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I got no issue. Track four. We'll end on a big event, the Super Bowl of Wrestling coming up this weekend, WrestleMania. Which WrestleMania match are you guys most looking forward to this weekend? You want me to go first? Yes, of course. The world heavyweight champion Seth Rollins and our guy Drew McIntyre, friend of the program. Uh, Drew, local guy, wears lightning hats. Big fan of his. He's probably been on DAE collectively in the last few years more than any other wrestler. I think Bianca Belair is up there, too. She's been on quite a bit collectively. Titus. Uh, Oh, yeah, Titus. for sure. Well, he's not on the card, though. No, No, I'm just saying you said uh, been on the show. Okay, so let me rephrase. People that are on the card here upcoming. Obviously, Titus Titus is always at the top of the top. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one. And then obviously for me, it's it's the main events, which you had to explain to me because I saw The Rock and Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, which I'm aware of because I see all the social media on it. And then I said, Jay, is this a typo? (laughs) There's another match between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes on night two. You explained that to me. Uh, So I, I... I think I'm looking forward to the second one more. Okay. Because it sounds like they're gonna go crazy with it. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna So if the Rock and Roman you. beat Seth and Cody, then it's bloodline rules. So it's like no which, disqualifications. Which means it's, gonna what? Be cra- it's just gonna be crazy. Bloodline chaos. rules. No rules, pretty much. Um, so it's gonna be Outback Ste- Steakhouse. No rules just right. <laughs> pretty pretty much. Yeah. Uh and then if it's uh Cody and Seth win, then it's gonna be just a strict one on one match, but that's boring, right? What's the percentage of that being the match? I, I think very small. Okay. Uh, my answer is, let me tell you something, <laughs> brother. 35 years ago, Hogan and Savage. Yeah, dig it. Savage, Hogan, WrestleMania 5, 35 years ago. One of my favorite matches of all time. One of the best storylines of all time. You got lust in your eye, brother. And just the way that Hulk Hogan was able to put his hand on the back of Elizabeth and he was propping her up. You got lust in your heart. I love that match. Uh, it's got to be the second match. As much as I, I always like to dive deep and say, "Oh yeah, I'd love to see Eo Sky and um, and Bailey and all these different matches." La Knight against AJ Styles. There's a lot of good matches going on. Don't get me wrong, but this is about Roman Reigns. This is about uh, Cody Rhodes. It's about those two gentlemen. As much as I love that Seth Rollins is involved and my favorite wrestler of all time, The Rock is back. This is about. The tribal chief, the head of the table, and the longest running universal champion that we've seen in our lifetime against a guy that's trying to finish the story. Cody Rhodes trying to win the championship that his dad never held in public. He won it one time and had it for one night. I believe it was at MSG, but never nationally recognized. If Cody wins this championship, you're talking about one of the 
finishing kind of touches on the longest storyline that we've seen in the modern era. I cannot wait. If you're not a big wrestling fan, I get it. But if you can get near a TV to watch the end of the event on Saturday and Sunday night, I guarantee you, you will be entertained. Great job, fellas. That's the mixtape. Thanks. Acknowledge me. That's me to Nick Wise and Aaron Jacobson. Still waiting, but Really? Yeah, for all the crap they talked in in defense of Chris Mathis about Gonzaga making the Final Four. Listen to this guy. Still waiting He's for still those. still upset. Aaron and Nick to acknowledge me. Yeah, because they were quick to, to run to his defense. I haven't heard any of them say anything else. help the guy out. He's a big boy. He didn't ask for it. Oh, appreciate it. He's Is he? Is he a big boy? He's getting there. <laughs> He's... With that stash, are you a big boy? He's getting there. He's getting there, buddy. All right, let's hit this break. When we come back, let's look ahead to see what the Rays have to do to be successful tonight against the Texas Rangers, the starting pitchers, and a whole lot more. Don't go anywhere. It's Jay and Zach here on 95.3 WDAE and AM620, your home of the Rays. It's a Tampa Bay tradition unlike any other. Well, sort of. It's back. The Drive Night Out with t Kraz. Score yourself a pair of tickets to hang out with t Kraz at the Trop and a Suite at Tropicana Field. And get the VIP treatment. For food, drinks, swag, and so much more as the Rays take on the Giants. Be listening all week to win. Presented by your Tampa Bay Rays and 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. Vehicle on fire in Palm Harbor on southbound US-19 at Tampa Road. There's stop-and-go traffic from Highlands Boulevard. Five-minute delays. Also northbound onlooker delays. Also Pinellas crash at Grand Avenue and Gandy. Stop-and-go traffic on the westbound Memorial Causeway heading to Clearwater Beach. Pasco crash just reported on northbound Little Road at Ridge Road, Newport Ritchie. Left lane blocked. Tampa accident with blockage, 50th Street at Palm River Road. With traffic... I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by Wawa. Wawa's new built-to-order wraps are here. It's all the flavor you love, wrapped up, and ready to move with your day. Try an Italian or bacon ranch chicken steak wrap today. Gotta have a Wawa. When you enter a place of business, you're owed a legal duty. That the place of business is safe for you to shop in because they are making a profit from you. That's the law. Yet many times a normal day ends with injuries because that business breached that duty because they knew or should have known of the dangerous condition that caused your injury. It happens every day in many ways. Slip and falls where cleaning and maintenance were ignored. Falling boxes and items stacked too high. And so many other unexpected occurrences and dangers only known to that business owner. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you suffered an injury at a place of business, let our team investigate and report back to you. The duty to protect customers from harm is the law, and our duty is to protect you after that harm. Visit ForThePeople.com for more information or on your cell phone, dial pound law. That's all. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. ForThePeople.com. Hey, it's Brett from Bull Oak. If you're ready to put a stop to your erectile dysfunction, then call Bull Oak today, Tuesday, April 2nd. Bull Oak uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy. This technology is backed by over 50 clinical studies, including research from Cambridge University. Our treatment gets to the root cause of erectile dysfunction by repairing blood vessels and increasing blood flow, all without the need for pills or the worry of side effects. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment, exam, even the blood flow ultrasound totally free. This is over $800 in value. And today only, for those who call in the next two minutes, new patients will receive their first treatment completely free. This is worth hundreds of dollars, but call today and it's totally free. Call 813-219-1919. That's 813-219-1919. Call Bull Oak now to qualify. This offer ends today, Tuesday, April 2nd. 813-219-1919. I'm Mark Anajar. I'm Glenn Levine. I'm Ellie Anajar. Together, we're Anajar and Levine, and our team is a triple threat to big insurance companies. Don't settle with the insurance companies for a fraction of what your case is worth. We'll fight to get you the maximum compensation you deserve. That's the Anajar and Levine difference. Get your free case review right now. We'll help you take back control of your life. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Main office, Tampa. 
and iHeartRadio Sports Report, presented by Mark Spain Real Estate. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial free stations waiting for you to explore right now, like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American A commercial free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Welcome back into Jay and Zach. Yeah, 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 Zach yeah, Lobner, yeah, yeah. Jay Retcher here. That's right. We slide into some more race talk. We look to get Tampa Bay. Well, Tampa Bay should look to get back on track tonight. They'll be taking on the Rangers in game two of their three game set. Uh, and then tomorrow is a, a nooner. It's an afternoon affair. It's a nooner. You going? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going too. Yeah. I'll be at a lot of the. Uh, Where's your tickets? <laughs> In the house, uh, you know what? Though I'll probably spend some time. Come on, I'll, I'll move around. I'll make the I'll make the rounds tomorrow. I'll probably spend an inning or two in the outfield. Ooh. I usually do. I love the catwalk area where you can stand yeah. and just look over. I I was there when Kiermaier hit the home run against the Astros in Game Three mm-hmm. a few years ago during the start of this playoff run, and it was electric. I've never felt more in quote-unquote Troptober than that exact moment. Let's let's ask that question again, okay? What is your favorite moment from the Rays when you were there at Tropicana Field? Was that number one? Like it, your favorite play or like favorite moment? Because like for me, mine was the play at the plate where there was the relay throw from Kiermaier to Adamas to get Altuve at the plate. Like that was such an incredible play, and I can't believe that I was in the building for that. So what was that one play? Was that it? I mean, that was definitely when I felt like the, I never thought the environment was better Mm -hmm. surrounded by race fans because Kiermaier hits it and the place, like it went off in a way I've never, I've never experienced since. And I certainly hadn't experienced Mm -hmm. before. Um, I think the debut days are always special, even though most of them, it kind of ends there. Like Mm -hmm. McKay day. Great to be at. Um, I'm talking about like a singular moment like that, like yeah. one play. Is that the iconic one for you? It's the one that sticks out because yeah. it was in the playoffs. It was that that was what brought them back to life. They win those two games. They go to Houston. Tyler Glass now tips his pitches, but up until that first inning starts, you're like, oh my god, they might beat the Astros in Houston. Like you're you started to believe in this team, mm-hmm. and then the next year they make the World Series, right? And then they make the playoffs after the best regular season ever. So obviously it's been ugly in the postseason the last three seasons now, which sucks. But up until that Red Sox series, there was a hell of a run there where they pushed the Astros in the postseason to five. And we all wonder what would happen if Glasnow wasn't tipping his pitches in that game. You make the World Series the next year, and then you have the best regular season in franchise history. So that span of that Kiermaier home run to that Red Sox series that they ended up losing in Boston, obviously— it was just such a great span of being a Rays fan. Um, Who hit that home run? Was it Jordan Luplo that hit the home run in the yeah, game one of the that The Grand series? Slam. Yeah. And then we're like riding high. We're like, oh, they're going to beat the brakes off these Red Sox. I know. It did not go that way. I still say, though, that Hunter Renfro in Boston, remember, it should have mm-hmm. been a ground roll double because he or he tipped Kiermaier's hit, which was like a home run. He, he gloved it into the outfield. Yeah. Well, the ball bounced, and then he hit it into the outfield, and they called it a, a ground rule double. And I was like, that's such crap. And it co- yeah. it cost them that game, and it co- it, there's the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Shane McClanahan's in the back, like, just breaking chairs and Beating stuff in the, the tunnel. crap out of something in the dugout. And too. we looked at that, and we said, well, he's going to come back and be a Cy Young candidate next year. Started the was. All-Star game. Got yeah. banged up, but he definitely was on a revenge tour that season. From the 813, Denard Span opening day against the Red Sox triple. That's a good one. Jose Lobatone hitting the walk-off home run against Boston in the playoffs. That place went nuts. There's a lot of good, you know, memories of, you know, when you were at that game. I remember when the, who was it? 
Gosh, I mean, Dan Johnson home run, I wasn't there for that one, but I can just imagine being there. How about the people that were in the building for the home run for Evan Longoria in game 162? Like, that had to be all time. I, I mean, I watched that one on TV. I wasn't there, but, like... I mean, that's just for the Rays. Like, I can remember, nuts. you know, a lot of good times being in the building for that. I remember they clinched the playoffs against the Orioles one year. That was pretty special. Um, I look at the other teams, too. I mean... Being in the building for the Lightning when they won the Stanley Cup in 2021 was just nuts. Like to be able to be in the building for that. Uh, the that Buccaneer- was the last time I got a little emotional. I yeah, think. that was the-, the last time I felt like true, pure physical emotion come over me. Mm-hmm. Just seeing them, the 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 confetti coming down and them yeah. skating around. Killorn's on one leg because it's like snapped still. <laughs> like it just it, it was cool, man. Yeah, uh, the Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl. Like if the. Not many people were in that building, you know. Half the capacity were there at Raymond James Stadium to be able to sit there and to be able to take that game in was pretty wild. The best part about that for me that day, I've never felt closer to the old days of radio and how Mm -hmm. radio used to be because we were at the Gandy location still. And I I went in and did radio for three hours after Ronnie and – or not Ronnie and – after T-Crass's overtime show after the Super Bowl. I know you were in that. I think you stopped by too for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got McDonald's at like two thirty in the morning, so I got like two or three hours in between before I was back for the morning show. But I did. I remember we're, we're still getting callers. We cut off. Yeah. It was like three or four a.m. And I, Nick, I had smoked a cigar outside. I was drinking beers in the studio. Listen to this guy. I was like, "This is this is it, folks. We're never gonna." And this is we say it now. It was. It's the golden time. The mm-hmm. Champa Bay span there which included all those things we just referenced. And, and I know we looked at this, uh, we were at the Valspar. It was, who, yeah. who are we talking to? Was it Ken Hagen? Yeah. Or yeah, was yeah. it Bob Herrick? I don't know. We're talking to somebody, somebody there. Yeah, yeah. One of the My, Rick Odioso is actually who it was. Yeah, you're right. You're and right. I had that graphic I pulled up because I remember making it. And I was like, in that five-year span, we had all the teams in the playoffs. We had the Rays in a World Series. We had the Lightning win two cups, B in three. We had the Bucks win a Super Bowl with Tom Freak and Brady. And all three of those franchises had the best regular season they've ever had in franchise history in that span one of those years. It's insane. Like, it, it, you can't draw up that type of stuff. The only part about it that is in any way bad, it happened during COVID. I know. I could only imagine how much even better off we would have been in terms of entertainment and enjoyment. But we got the boat parades because of that, so there were some good things that came from it. That would Change the game. That would have been normal parades otherwise. We would have never seen a Change boat parade. Game. Yeah, I guess when we're talking about outside of the games, uh, being in that first boat parade with the Lightning is like one of the most memorable days of my entire life. Just going through that and walking. <laughs> I remember that night after the boat parade because they were at Raymond James Stadium afterwards, and we obviously know Patrick Moon and Nikita Kucherov. Being there and seeing Nikita Kucherov party with Jeff Finnick was uh, definitely an insane feeling. But I'm walking down Dale Mabry, walking down South Dale Mabry, and I'm just like, did that day just happen? I'm sitting there. I'm walking about a half a mile down South Dale Mabry to catch my Uber because Ubers were insanely ridiculous that day and super expensive. And I'm just walking down the street. Street. I'm, I'm tan. I'm tired. I smell awful. And I'm just wondering, did I just go through that? Did that really just happen? And it really did. It's... Very fortunate. Very See, fortunate. And for me, so both of the lightning ones, I was just out and about in the world. And I brought, I, my wife was with me both times. For the Bucks one, though, I was on a media boat similarly. And I, I always think about this because I know you bring it up when you were in Raymond James, you were by Mark Cook. Mm-hmm. He was on the same boat as me. Yeah. And that's something that's like, you know, I wish he was still here. Mm-hmm. I hate that he's not, but I'm, I'm thankful for that memory because the boat ride was a long boat ride. And if he wasn't on that boat, it would have felt a lot longer. But then I think about afterwards, too. We go through the full celebration. Bruce Arians is cursing up a storm. You're coming back. You're coming back. Gronk is, like, literally standing up with five security officers holding him because he's he's a giant dude and he's obliterated. He's huge. And I'm walking out, similar to what you just said, looking for an Uber. And I'm like, I'm so screwed. Like, because we're far away from where we parked. Uh, And then Will Golson's out there. And he's like, hey. we start talking. And he's he's making me drink tequila. And I'm like, I don't even want this, bro. And he's like, bottoms to tops. But I remember I'm sitting there and I'm like, I can't find an Uber. And I see one of the buses that's taking back the people that worked, not media people, but like the people that were actually working. What and a I'm scoundrel. like, I'm just going to get on this bus and see what happens. And I get on 
And I got some of those looks like we're not supposed to be here, but nobody yeah. fortunately said anything. Yeah. And the bus takes off. It takes me right back to my car. Oh, that's great. I got lucky as hell. Yeah, you did. Lucky as hell. Some of the other great moments to remember and games that you were at. Uh, 20 seats over and one row back from where Longo's home run landed in game 162. That is a great memory. Nick in Sarasota got to see the Brady comeback versus the Bills. It was the first time I saw football Jesus in person. Is that Brashad Perryman uh, that caught that? At the be, end? Yeah, down the right sideline. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aki getting the final out to get to the World Series. That's the 727. And then also from the 813, another person that was there for 162. And like 75% of fans had left. We got close enough to get sprayed with champagne and high five all of the players. I got it. So to the Aki thing, there's two statues in front of the trot now. Mm-hmm. There's the Aki moment and there's the Longo moment. 162. The plaque was missing for both of those when I was there at Fan Fest because I looked. I got to check tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They haven't said anything about it. I haven't really asked about it. Mm. I find it hard to believe that they took them off to redo them or just removed them all together. I wonder if somebody took the plaques on those statues out front of the trot. Really? So like the day after they unveiled them, the longer one was missing. The the plaque Mm. explaining what it was. So the statue's still there and everything. It wasn't screwed up. But the plaque explaining what it was on the bottom part was gone. But the Aki one wasn't. And then, again, at Fan Fest, I looked, and the Aki one was gone, too. And the Longo one was still gone. And I, I like, I don't want to go full tinfoil hat here. I have a f- gut feeling, though, that, like, somebody straight up yoinked them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, how do you think I bought into that Hard Rock uh, Texas Hold'em tournament, buddy? Stop <laughs> telling people. Uh, uh, I didn't see anything. I didn't see any. Uh, Zach Eflin in action tonight for the Rays. Let's get to this real quick before we hit mm-hmm. this break. I know you got something special uh, for the final segment. Zach Heflin against Andrew Haney, and I know this is a big bounce-back performance Should that be. Zach wants to have for this Tampa Bay Rays team. And listen, left-hander and Haney on the mound, it's going to be a heavy right-handed lineup for the Rays tonight. And uh, I expect them to be able to, you know, show some resilience tonight and come back and show everybody like, hey, it's just five games. This is what we're going to do because I, I don't – I'm not sold on Haney. I think this is a very winnable matchup for Tampa Bay. Absolutely. I would be so much more surprised if Zach Eflin didn't, you know, gas through a lot of this lineup today. That's not to say he'll have a no-hitter that'll throw a perfect game or anything like that. But he, I thought, really did look good through five innings last week. And I think that outside of getting beat up in the six, like, he's a guy that is going to be able to step in now and just more comfortably get into his role. And technically... Second pitcher on the bump. This is what he's more accustomed to. He's not used to being the opening day guy, the ace, the number one, you know, I'll plug the the hole on the ship type of uh, pitcher. I think this is going to be more comfortable for him. I really do expect him to bounce back, and I expect the bats to be better tonight as well. I think this is the most winnable game in the series. Agreed. Uh, Agreed by with far. That one. So we'll keep an eye on the Rays. When we return, though, what's on the menu? We'll take a look back at what you missed today on the show, what we have coming up on Thursday since we're off tomorrow because of that Rays Day game, and the drive with Tom Krasnicki starts at 3 o'clock. We'll take a look at his program. I got a special special message specific to today as well that I want to get out to y'all listening. But first, Jay and Zach for the gold and diamond source. When it comes to April Birthstone Jewelry, diamonds take center stage. They symbolize love, strength, and eternity. Diamonds are a classic choice. The Golden Diamond Source, your trusted jewelry destination for 40 years, only deals with natural diamonds. Remember, there's no other gemstone quite like a diamond. It's found in the most remote places on Earth. It takes billions of years to form those natural diamonds. You don't want something that was made in a factory just two weeks ago. And for those first-time diamond buyers, they've got the Golden Diamond Source first-time buyer program where they'll educate you about the four C's and the all di- and all the different shapes and styles. Don't forget, too, Jay, at the Golden Diamond Source, a diamond never loses its value. You can always trade up for a bigger, better diamond. How about a hell of a deal there? Spring clean your jewelry collection. Find out how much your golden diamonds are worth today over at the store. They can professionally clean, check settings, make any necessary repairs to keep your jewelry in top condition. It's great for brownie points. I do it all the time. For the misses, I'm telling you, gents, it's the way to Go and to celebrate the 40th year anniversary at the Golden Diamond Source, they're offering up to 40% off select jewelry items. If you're going to buy a diamond, do we do make sure it's a Golden Diamond Source diamond? The Golden Diamond Source 300 all winter run in clear water. Tell them Jay and Zach sent you always online at the Golden Diamond Source.com. The Pat and Aaron Show, the show of the people, raw and unapologetic.
apologetic. All right, Rays fans, I got my shovel ready. You know, I've had it re- ready for a long time. I've had it ready for like over a decade. If this measure isn't approved, you might as well bury the shovel. Feed your need for Tampa Bay sports talk. The Pat and Aaron Show. Morning starting at 6 on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. This is Dave Graham, the retirement guy. Did you purchase an annuity that hasn't made you any money? Well, the good news is that you're not stuck with it. At Graham Capital Advisors, our new proprietary software will show you how to redirect your money into the highest available income payouts for life. These are the newest rates. If you're 60 years old, you can get 7.2%. At 65, 7.9%. At 70, 8.5%. And at 80, 10%. Sounds good? To schedule an appointment, just go to GrahamCapitalAdvisors.com. Ah, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audible Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audible Hearing Centers at FloridaHearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Taxes and fees apply. Enjoy lunch or dinner today at Kelly's Roast Beef, the iconic taste of Boston, home of the original roast beef sandwich. Plus, authentic New England seafood, chicken sandwiches, burgers, dogs, ice cream, kids' meals, and more. All freshly made with gluten-free options, too. Dine in or drive through today at Kelly's Roast Beef. Mention this ad and get a free Kelly scratch card for special discounts or free food. Stop by today at University and Honore in Sarasota and just northeast of Pasadena and Shore Drive in St. Pete. Kelly's Roast Beef. Bosch tools are built for workers. Bosch's powerful hammer drill has kickback control to help work go more smoothly when you need it. The two-in-one impact driver and wrench quickly changes between bits and sockets, so you only need one tool instead of two. And the X-Lock grinder switches wheels up to five times faster than standard grinders. Bosch tools take care of the job and you. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. Learn more at BoschTools.com. Your home sold in 14 days. Guaranteed at DuncanDuo.com. Play ball! Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. We are Tampa Bay's home for sports and Rays fans around the globe. Over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. The X Factor, X-Factor. presented by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. The Arizona Diamondbacks host the New York Yankees tonight. Now fielder Lord- Lourdes Gurriel has led Arizona's lineup early on, scoring six runs, belting three homers, and driving in ten during the team's first five games. He is tonight's X Factor. X Factor brought to you by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. What is on the menu? Everything we have up on our page, jnzack.com. Eric Erlinson, lightninginsider.com, joined us. That was really cool. Let's talk all things Bolts with him. And then Denard Span in studio every Tuesday at 1 p.m. We'll have what a great chat. Uh, fantastic hour with Denard. Can't wait to do it again next week with him. What do we got coming up on the show tomorrow? We Baseball. Don't. We got baseball. Baseball. It's a nooner. At the Trop, uh, going to swing by and watch the Rays and Rangers wrap their series. Thursday, though, we're back in action. 12-3 to 3 here. We'll have Chris Johnston on, right? Talking CJ, a little yep. hockey with mm-hmm. us. We'll check in with, from a national perspective on the Bolts with him. Uh, Sean Merriman, lights out, but lights right. on the show. He's going to join us. We'll talk uh, some football and just see what he's got coming up on his next fight card. He's always putting out great things. So that and kicking it a pair. Actually, I think it's a four-pack of rowdy yeah, four tickets. four-packs. Also up for grabs. That's all this Thursday. Uh, the Drive with Tom Krasnicki starts at 3, Jay. Zach Littell joins them. Uh, Ray's right-hander at 3.30. Uh, They've got a fill-in-the-blank in the opening drive, the final drive, uh, the drive-through, and uh, the driver. All that stuff coming up on The Drive with Tom Krasnicki. And that's what's on the menu here on Jay and Zach. Presented by Barto Ford. If you're tired of big city prices... 
you shouldn't be. If you're not going to Barto Ford, then you're going the wrong way. At Barto Ford, if it's for sale, it's on sale. Don't go the wrong way. Go to BartoFord.com. A lot of people asking me why I'm dressed up today. It's not about the outfit as much as it's about the pins here. For Autism Awareness, April 2nd is National Autism Awareness Day. Shout out to the Rays. I know Harold Ramirez has a child that's autistic, and he, with the Rays, created the sensory room at the TROP. Um, you know, today I'm here to talk about it a little bit with y'all, not to ask you for money, not to ask you for to go out in your community and make a difference. Although both those things are always great things when you can do them. Uh, very simple message from me today. And, and I have people in my life, um, that are in my family that are a part of the autism community. And I can say that being at DAE, I've actually learned a lot about that community. I was very ignorant and unaware of it. Uh, but I've learned so much and I mean this sincerely over the last few years through Autism Speaks and other autism um, awareness uh, places that do a lot of great work in that community, just how special of a community it is and how great those people are and how they're not different. They're not less than. And all I ask of people today, all I ask of all of you listening today is to be a little bit more kind to those people in that community and to people in general. And I can say that in my life, I grew up in society using the R word. It was very normalized. I still, every once in a blue moon, it slips and I, I can't try to catch myself. Uh, it is a word that is very degrading to that community, the R word. We all know what the R word is. All I ask of you is to try not to use it. And if you do use it, try to use it less. Uh, it isn't something that you need if you want to call, if you're joking with your even your buddies and your friends, and I do a lot of that. You know, call them something else. There's a lot of names to pick from in the book when you're trash talking or gooning around. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I tell you that it, it it would mean a lot to that community. It would lean, mean a lot to me if, if you just that simple act, try to use the R word. Not at all. Definitely using it less it is something simple we can all do that doesn't cost us time or money. And today on Autism Awareness Day, a great day to do it. Cut the R out. Just got to do. It's, it's easy. Um, it just takes a little bit of effort. And again, it's. I get it. Like I grew up in joking around with people in my life uh, using it and, and I certainly became normalized to it. And I think through learning, we can all be less ignorant and that that's one of those words that we can just punt. You just, there's no need for it. And it is, it is, uh, it is something that hurts that community, hurts people in it. And, um, it's just an unnecessary word. So, uh, again, I, I can empathize cause I used it my entire life up until a few years ago. No reason why we can't punt that word out of existence though. What do you got going on tonight, but eh? Tonight, uh, I am going to be watching the Rays game. It is the wife's birthday tomorrow. Whoa. So uh, I did a little bit of celebrating with her this past weekend. I'll be getting prepped for celebration tomorrow. I'm off. She's not, ironically. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm just making sure that I check all the boxes I have to so that I don't get uh, sent to the doghouse anytime soon, which is something we all try to do, I think, in relationship. Stay relationships. out of the doghouse. Oof. What do you got? Pre- what do you have? Uh what do you have in store? Planned? Yeah. She has been She's more difficult this year than ever in terms of she doesn't want anything. So this weekend we did a lot of great celebrating. We went around, uh, checked out a bunch of breweries, did basically I'm just giving her leeway, whatever she wants. And tomorrow she wants to stay at home. She wants me to grill out and make burgers. And uh, there's a movie she wants to watch. And, you know, obviously I got presents and gifts and stuff. Which but movie? Wish. Yeah, that's what the girls, it comes out tomorrow on Disney Plus, right? On Disney Plus. Yeah. yeah. We, girls I took her to see Friday. it in theaters. I thought it was good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's geared towards the Disney diehards. There's a lot mm-hmm. of um, references to older Disney movies. So, yeah, I was like, listen, I, we can ta- I can take you out. We can do things. That's what she wants to do. So I did all the taking out and stuff this past weekend. So we're going to do that. And then we got two 5Ks this weekend to wow. continue the celebration. 5K on the runway with the Tampa International Airport. And then the Rays 5K. Uh, if y'all haven't seen that and you like to run, you want to mm-hmm. check it out. It's the only one unofficially that runs through two professional stadiums. I think it's official. I, I threw it out there. The Rays bid on it, uh, but they never confirmed one way or another. One thing I can confirm is you and I will not be on air tomorrow. Raise up. Hopefully we're looking to win the series and not salvage a game. Yeah, you got that right. So we're off tomorrow. Back in action on Thursday, as Zach alluded to. So, uh, yeah, if you tune in at noon tomorrow and you hear some Rays talk, you know why. But uh, I'm going to try to be at the game tomorrow if I can. So a big thank you to everybody involved in the program today, including Eric Erlinson, the Nards Band. Good to see our guy John Howard stop yeah. by as well. No bolts tonight. They're back in action tomorrow in Toronto. And of course, Rays and Rangers. You can hear that all right here on the home of the Rays. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Don't go anywhere. The Drive with Tom Kaznicki coming up next. 
Great job, as always, our guy John Dugas on the other side of the wall. For Zach Blobner, 